said I got to say something, baby, hand me the mic. I said I got to say something, better hand me the mic. Uh, somebody, somebody hand me the mic. Cause I got to say something, so just hand me the mic. I'm gonna really need to say something, better hand me the mic. I said I got to say something, baby, hand me the mic. I love your conversations about palm oils. I do you do, have an opinion? I, I do have an opinion. I've I have got a um I've got a place that I religiously go to. Everybody does. <laughs> Everybody does. So let's hear it. So I go to Antoni's. I know what you mean. And I collection get, only. And I yeah, which is always a good rule of thumb of a place. <laughs> mm-hmm. I all if a place only does that, I'm I'm all you've already got me. And I get the chips well done as well. You request this? I request this. Right. Yeah. And I get I get mine with the garlic butter and I get mine with pepperonis on. I don't like it too. I don't like my, I don't like really hot food. And it's unbelievable. And my mate who is like he's a proper food snob and he strongly recommended do Antonis and I've not I go there every time. In another life Many, many moons ago, I was seeing a young lady and for about a six-month period, we got Antonis. I was thinking of the same place, Gladstone Street. Yes. Yes. We got, that was her place. Right. She was dead set. And obviously, you know, the lady makes the choice on what we eat, you know? So <laughs> I remember every day, um, funnily enough, South Point, remember the story I told you about with the fight? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> yeah, well, there, there was a there was a, a set two. Let's just say. Um, I'll tell oh you, yes, I do. Re- sorry, yes, I do recall. That was an Antonis Parmesan, right? Of course. Yes. Yes. Well, well, That's what, a story for a different day. What? what, what there was a, f- a fight broke out in there. <laughs> no, no, no. We. Uh, <laughs> it was a. Uh, you know, everybody was silly when they were younger. It was a wine fueled evening. Um, I, I, you know, and I, I I happened to get my lips popped by this by this lady. Um, All right. Okay. So she ended up with a Parmesan on her. <laughs> is is that's the way it ends, you know? Because <laughs> you know what I've always thought, um, like from my years of experience of going out, pizza shops after a night out turned into code reds for me because <laughs> the amount of altercations oh, yeah. that I've been involved in mm-hmm. and seen, it's kind of like people are either wanting to have sex or have a fight. Mm-hmm. And there's all, there's always kickoff. So once I started with a little bit more years of life experience, it was kind of like, no, I'm no. not going there. No, L- unless it's, it's home time. Southport, didn't you lose some trainers and get headbutted in a takeaway recently? Yes, no, it wasn't recently. Oh. I just turned eighteen. It was a Digi Monday in Newcastle. If you mm. know Digi Monday, if, if yeah. it's one of them, if you know, you know. Anyway, I was at Digi Monday, great night out, and then we went to the kebab shop as you do. After went and got some food, and I, when I was eighteen, I had all the expensive shoes. I had like these Balenciaga shoes on, and this guy came up to me and he just said, "Give us your shoes or a tenner." <laughs> and I just laughed at him. I said, mate, the shoes are worth 300 quid. And he's went, it's, <laughs> just head budged me up. And then before you know it, I like wake up. He's like sprinted out the shop. My nose is pouring. There's oh, like no. tissues being thrown on my face. Kept the shoes though, And I right? went home. My mum was like, we're going to press charges. We're going to find him. I was like, mum, we're not going to find him. Just oh, leave no. it. But yeah, that was That's 18. That's horrible. Yeah, it's awful. Isn't it? He should have, well, I should have just gave him a tenner. But th- there you go. These things happen. And, yeah. yeah. But backs it. up your point. Mm. Honestly, it really does. It, it all I've of a sudden so it, many, can, it can just switch. I've seen so many allocations. It's crazy. Yeah, remember the story? I mean, same again. You remember the the story I told you when I got sparked out when he made me do a three hundred and sixty? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that yes. one. Yeah, that started in uh, Best Kebab. No way. That's where it started. Yeah, Best Kebab. Yeah, I was I was working my lips with this um, child. Basically, I was about twenty two. You know, I was a man. Right. And there was this child. He must have been. 13, 14, if he was a day in the in the kebab shop. I don't know where his mum and dad was, but it was late, you know what I mean? Anyway, very drunk. And um yeah, he'd, he'd, he again he give me a he hit he hit me in the in the kebab shop. Oh. And uh, you know, it was one of those sort of I must have just accepted it at the time, but then it, it turned into me chasing after him, right? <laughs> And, you know, we call it the back of Argos. It hasn't been Argos for donkey's years, but, you know, around the back of Argos, oh, like what that. we call the back of Argos. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, you know, caught up with this, you know, this this infant around there. And um, <laughs> I approached him and, you know, let's say challenged him. But I thought it would be a good idea to take my top off, right? 
and I had a <laughs> well, shirt. We were in a tracksuit top. No, it was easier. It was easy <laughs> no, no, no. access. <laughs> I, I had a shirt, but I didn't unbutton it. So I pulled this shirt over my head, and I got stuck in my shirt. <laughs> right. And this young gentleman, because he, he must have been a classy guy, he'd waited, you know, probably 30 seconds for me to fight my way out of this shirt. And I, then, I, you know, by the time I got it off, I'd looked at him, and then the next thing I know, my friends around me saying, are you all right? Are you all right? And I said, what, what, what went on? And he said, you, you literally span you around and you just, just out. And then he must have, it must have been his bedtime. So he must have gone, gone home. But yeah, I got absolutely sparkled by a child. He knocked my teeth out, everything. Oh, no way. Yeah, man. Yeah, wow. it was. I mean, it must have been, if he was rocking around 13, he must have had maybe a lot of confidence and probably maybe able to handle himself. Who knows? But, you know, life's full of lessons. You know, I've, I've, I've never challenged a child since. You know, that's the truth of the matter. Um, but yeah, that's 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 that one. Yeah. Uh, are we um are we rolling, Southpaw? We are rolling. We are rolling. Okay. So <clears throat> this is people like us. Today's guest is a barber, a guest speaker, and an advocate for men's mental health. He's the creator of Mr. Hutton's Barbers and the force behind Never Throw in the Towel project. We are grateful to be joined today by Mr. Anthony Hutton. Anthony, thank you for talking with people like us. Um, okay, start from the beginning. How are you doing, mate? Really good. So I want to ask you this, right, as the first proper sideways question, right? I just want to know this. <clears throat> if you weren't a barber, what would you want to be? Well, I, I always wanted to be a footballer. Ah. That was, um, right from a kid, I was obsessed with trying to be a footballer. Um, I, I was a... I was terrible, ter- terrible academically. Always the one of the, the you know, the thickest in the class. Uh, always struggled to read, st- still do. And but I was very good when it came to sports. Come from a very much a football, a football household, and my whole kind of youth was me the, the on this mission to try to be a footballer. And um, obviously, that didn't come off. So and then I think I've I was I've always been a closet hairdresser. Have I've you? always be I've always been fascinated with um, the hair industry. How always. did it come about then? The barber. Like, so it, it must have been an early age thing, barbering. It must have or hair. So I was always um, you know into me into me appearance and and then I remember coming across. Um, I just want I don't know I was a, a bit fascinated by the hair industry and obviously I didn't become a footballer and then my first job was a postman which that absolutely wasn't me and I used to, I remember going to Tony and Guy I remember when I first went to Tony and Guy in Newcastle City Centre and there was kind of like loads of cool people music was playing I was getting a nice shampoo my hair a head massage I remember getting my hair straightened and I was just all over it but Obviously, being like a sporty football lad, a hairdresser was associated with girls and gay lads. So it was always kind of like, oh, I can't be a hairdresser. I can't be a hairdresser. And then there was this TV show called The Salon that was on Channel 4. Right. Like and reality, was it? It was like a reality TV show, yeah. And there was like a lot of straight lads cutting hair, really cool guys. And I was like, oh, that's, that's me. That's me, and then slowly but surely ended up getting getting into the industry. Do you remember the first? It's funny you were, you were telling that story. I actually sort of can like relate to that. Growing up, I don't know if it was the same for you, but growing up, it was like the two pound fifty haircuts <clears throat> from. We had a guy called Edward Scissorhands. This guy just whistled all day. You yeah. know, one of them like older men who can do them really impressive whistles. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Some old blokes can whistle, and you're like, "How are you doing that?" Yeah, really good. <laughs> Wow, that's unbelievable. He's, he's yeah, full of it. Yeah. You should hear the family guy thing he does. Yeah. We'll, we'll get yeah. to that. <laughs> wow. But yeah, yeah. Um, loads of talents, you know. That's why we get him. But I, this, this, yeah, this, this, same as you, like the old barber, like, you know, two pound, 50, three pound. Everybody got the same haircut. One back and side, short on top, feather the fringe. You know the deal. Yeah. And the first time one of my friends went to, um, Hall, what was he called? Oh, no, Dave, might have been David Hall's. I think it was called David Halls. Mm-hmm. That's what it used to be. Stephen Halls. Stephen Halls, yeah. that was it. And that's where I, uh, 
Paul David, they worked there. And I, the same as you, to me, a male hairdresser was a homosexual guy. That's what it was. And it was, yeah. just wasn't for cool people. Same as you, I walked in that barber's, uh, well, salon one yeah. day and just been thinking, I don't belong here. But then seeing <clears throat> these beautifully dressed, very attractive, very masculine males yeah pattering all the girls like da, 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 da. everybody loved them like you say giving proper styles a straighten of the tg stick yeah. and just thinking wow the, yeah wow what a, i have completely misjudged this yeah um and i yeah. guess that was a moment for you was it yeah and i think i'm someone who who has to enjoy what i do i you know i've always if i love it I'm I'm obsessive with it. I'm all over it. If I if I'm not interested in something, I'm out. Right. So I, I I feel as if I the type of person I am, I, I would have I've kind of got to I've got to love what I what I do because if I'm if I'm not I'm not I'm not in there. And I think for me, you know, I think it's it's so important that you like what you do for for a living because you know if you if you kind of had a pie chart of your day. The biggest, for most people, the biggest slice of that pie chart is probably work. Yeah, and, for most people, yeah. Yeah. So for me, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense to enjoy what you're doing. And I totally get, you know, could I be swayed by a, a lot of money? Yeah, potentially I, I could be, yeah. But if you're not, for me, if, you, if you're not getting a lot, of, if you're not getting really paid well, then I think that's, there should be a high enjoyment of enjoying what you do because it's it's most of your day mm. i can relate to what you said to be fair about the um not being interested it's probably similar to you at school i was in i was in very low sets for the academic side of it your maths your english your science same as you not not the greatest of readers you know yeah maybe add up on average but pretty much everything else i didn't know what the hell was going on <clears throat> but when it came to pe and obviously football, it was set yeah. one all the time, always on the football team, you know, yeah. that just such a contrast. And I think it, what you've said, I think is pretty valid. I think it's, it's interest, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. So, some, not, not all kids. I think some kids can just, can just adapt to things and, and you know, do well in things they're not interested in. Yeah. But I think for some kids that yeah. if you're not exciting their intellect, if you're not, you know, sparking yeah. something, they're just, they're not going to take to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. Well, you know what I've watched, uh, I must say I've loved watching your podcasts. Oh, that's very kind I, of I, I, I really have. Um, I've kind of stumbled across. I think Cameron, one of my pals, he'd done it. Amazing and then guy. I, and then when, um, when I've been, you know, when he's asked me to go on, I, I've actually been watching them in my spare time. I've been doing a bit of painting in the garden, and um, this might sound a bit cheesy, but I, I, we've got a lot in common. Really, there's so much, loads of stuff that you say. We've, we, I'm like, yep. Yeah, 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 that's me. That's me. And then I remember you, uh, one of the one of the episodes that I watched was y you would have maybe liked to have been a hairdresser. Oh, I'd love to. And the thing the thing is, so for me, I, it's like I'm a barber. I cut hair and talk shit for a living. And you've got the effortlessly shit talking art Thank off you too. And it's it is <laughs> and it is a fine art. Yes, it is a fine art. Yeah, and it. Um, but it, it does it, it's just kind of like, if you've got that in your locker, it's just kind of like being a people person, being a good talker. Anyone can learn the skill set mm. of the Bob. I truly believe that. I feel, I feel as if anyone, if they're kind of like interested in it, anyone can learn how to be a barber. There's the, there's a structure and a format to it. The personality, that might be something that you can't teach mm. and the kind of the chatty side of things and that that kind of charismatic rapport that, that, you, that you have. Um that you can't really teach. Do you know, um, to me, the, 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 the like in hairdressing, I didn't like click until later in life. Yeah. It isn't until I, probably only like 10, 15 years ago, I started to look and think, probably around the Paul David time. Right, okay. I started to think, ah, I've missed the boat here. Mm. Shouldn't have done mechanics. You know, that wasn't the right way. <laughs> I mean, way. You, look, you look like a hairdresser. Thank you. Like um, a cool hairdresser. Yeah, I'd love Definitely that. Definitely not a mechanic. But yeah, now, like at the ripe age of knocking on 40, like, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like it's, to me, it seems like the greatest job in the world, really. You yeah, know, I as mean, far as loving your job. I've, I can, and most, pe most people will probably tell you what I'm saying. So I've, I've never had a bad day at work. 
really? I I genuinely see it as almost a um, like a paid hobby. I've, it's it's so tailored to me who as a person, you know, I talk shit. For, I love talking shit for a living. <laughs> um, I just and it's I'm a very much a people's person. And I love fashion and I kind of love style and all that type of stuff. So it's really, really like I, I feel fortunate that I've tapped into uh, an occupation that is actually me as a person. And, more, you know, most m- most kind of barbers or hairstylists will probably tell you the same thing. I'd, I'll, I'll always cut hair in some way, shape or form. I, I absolutely love it. A barber can't have a bad day. I was thinking as you were coming, because I knew you were about, and I was, I was thinking to myself... I've never seen anyone that's cutting my hair whinge or complain or say, this is shit. And I think, is that because they're uber happy or is it part of the job that, you know, obviously you speak to people day in, day out, yeah. right? And I bet you get people in your chair that some people, oh, everything's bang on, mate, everything's great. But you get some people who are Debbie Downers. Oh, I'm sick of this, sick of that, sick of the other. I've never heard it the other way. Never. Yeah. I've never heard about it. Yeah, I think, I think... In general, probably there's, um, you know, I think the stats, there's been stats that hairdressers and barbers are the happiest occupation. Most most of them do really like like the job. So that, that that's for me. I, I absolutely love it. And like I said, I will literally talk shit all fucking day long. I love it. And, but also on a, on a, from a professional standpoint as well, that's an element of, you know, you, you are delivering a service as well. So even if you are maybe having that bad day, which we all have, there's still an, an element of, of uh, professionalism as well. And, but sometimes, you, you know what, it's, I, I always, sometimes I call myself a poor man's therapist because, the, you know, the, the, um, the, the stuff I get told in the chair, but, uh, you know, with a long with a long serving client, I always say with a long serving client that it's a very unique friendship that mm. you build that you know, confidentiality that sometimes there might be a you know a client of mine that I've done for years we might only have that relationship in that chair it doesn't it doesn't kind of we don't have a we don't have a drink outside of it no. we have that relationship in that chair but actually he will tell me stuff that he doesn't tell anyone else because mm. maybe I'm outside that, that group circle and he kind of sees it as a safe space. So it's it's a fascinating job. It, it really is. I, I find it fascinating. I think there is an element of, um, funny you say confidentiality, someone I wanted to ask you, and this is just my experience, but I bet it's the same. I tell my hairdresser things that I don't tell anybody. He, yeah. he knows everything everything yeah. about me, every, everything that I want people to know, everything I don't want people to know. Yeah. And it, that hasn't happened. I didn't just sit in his chair for the first day and just tell him out all my business, but it's year after year, seeing him all the time, seeing him all the time. Yeah. And it's your barber, your hairdresser, whatever you, you know, whoever you go see, the, like you said, they are a bit of a, like a confidant, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they um, <clears throat> it's a funny relationship. You know, yeah. you, you oh, think yeah. as, as a rule, like my hairdresser, he's, he's not my friend. Yeah. You know, we've never socially yeah. thingied. He's not related to me. I see him once a month for an hour and a half, you know? Mm-hmm. That's the way it's always been. And for me to see somebody that little, but him know so much, and yeah. me to feel okay to open up and be honest with him, yeah. it's really weird dynamic. Yeah, And maybe maybe it's an element of like, because it's actually quite intimate, a hairdresser. Oh, yeah, it's totally. Actually, you know, how many people touch you like, you know what I mean? Like, Well, that's what I'm saying. Imagine if you had someone who... It was touching your shoulder, touching your face, touching your cheeks. But then you said they were a barber. It's like, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. It totally makes sense. Yeah, it is, it is, it is, huh. it is like intimate in a non-homosexual way. It is. Um, and I th- I've, I've been told that there's the studies of it because it's the the format of it where they, they stood in the chair, you're standing over them as well. It's, I don't know, it's just that... It's probably just that one to one, and that kind of it's something that I've always kind of um, prided myself on in terms of with clients. If it you know if it's something important that they don't want me to say anything, mm. then it's 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 not getting leaked. Mm. It, it stays in house. Um, it's something that I kind of hold as a high regard. Yeah, I think I think 
people, you know, the hairdressers and barbers of this world, I bet they could get a lot of people in a lot of trouble, you know? <laughs> the stuff they know. I, I, I used to call myself like the priest. It was like the co- the co- the confession. I was like, I, 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 I need to be I need to be dressed in priest attire here yeah. because this is the confession room. Literally. In my 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 place, Mr. Hutton's like massively massively lent itself to that because when you came, when you come in when you came into Mr. Hutton's, it was majority a, a bar. Mm. And then right at the back was the was this quite small room with the barber chair, and it was very very secluded. So it was it was almost like the confession like box, conf- yeah. like uh, my sins. <laughs> like, <laughs> please forgive me. And I bet you've I bet you've heard some sins as well. Oh, no, honestly. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Do you know what, like a barber? Like, I, just what I have noticed is this, is this. Do you find this? And I, I only noticed this again a few months ago. I was in my hairdressers, right? I'm sat, um, I get a cut and colour, right? Right. So he's, he's, first things first, he's put the colour on, right? We've had this talky, talky, talky. He's told me his business, blah, 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 blah. I've told him mine. I've then gone sat under the the warm thing, yeah. right? It's not far from where he is. I'm listening about on my phone and I hear exactly word for word the same story, right? <laughs> I've With, heard you say this. Yeah. And then <laughs> later on in the day, uh, or, you know, an hour later, whatever it was, I'm getting my hair washed. Yeah. And I've heard him telling somebody else. So my, my hairdresser was juggling three people and I've heard exactly the same story. Do you do that? Sometimes. Do you tell the same story? It gets, day it, it gets better the further hour it goes. Yeah, yeah. I'll just season it and make it a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. And a little bit better. There was two lads I was fighting by by 5pm to 7. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, yeah. <laughs> no, so, yeah, yeah, so, like... It, it just depends. Sometimes the the conversation will go, but if there's if there's something re, you know really interesting happen, mm. or something you know think that I think thinks a cool story, because mm. ultimately a lot of it, a lot of it's you know sometimes you just st- everything's storytelling, isn't it? Yeah. And um, sometimes if it's a cool story, yeah, I've probably churned churned out that same story. Yeah, give, <laughs> give it a bit of butter, you know, just <laughs> yeah. add it to it. Yeah, just add a little bit of seasoning to but, it. But I suppose if everybody's you know if everybody's getting in your chair, like you, you've only got one life. So you yeah, can only, yeah. you know, how was your holiday? Yeah. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you have to tell saying, that story, yeah. you know, you're not yeah, telling yeah. different stories, really. Yeah. Like, like you say, you might be some seasoning, but <laughs> for the most part, you've, you've got to say the same story. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever get sick of saying the same story? Um, you must tell five or six same stories every day. No? <laughs> That's like I said, I'm a professional shit talker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. With barbers, right? You know, you said it's always a profession you can get taught. I, I want to ask about it. Is, is there like an element of like art to it. So like, okay, I was shit at drawing at school, right? Mm-hmm. I was terrible. I was, yep. I'm was. i not an artist, far from it. Mm-hmm. We Because it's so like, what's the word? It, it's so like creative and like, do you have to, do you have to be good at that sort of stuff? Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm a sh- I, I was a shit drawer. Oh. Um, yeah. Wasn't a very good drawer, um, but very creative though, but not actually drawing. So some people kind of, you know, ask that saying, oh, it's, it's an art. Whereas, is there, is it, is it, is there an element of arty or art to it? Yeah, I would, I would say, I would say so. But can you teach someone to be a fantastic portrait drawer? You, for me, you can't teach that. Can you teach someone to do a, fin, a skin fade and be a barber? I believe you can teach that. Yeah, you, absolutely. You so believe? A, anyone believe, can learn? I believe anyone can, can learn. Really? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. To get to like a, a good enough level to do it yeah, on people. Yeah, there's a, you know, I, 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 I'm an educator as well. I, I teach I teach barbering and yeah, there, there's a structure. There's a tall, I mean, f- f- fading is simply making lines and rubbing them out. Anyone can kind of, I believe anyone can, can learn how to do it. Have you ever done like a fade on someone and like stood back at the end and thought, oh shit, that side's higher than that side, you know? Um. You know what? Something you disclose. No, no, you, well, to you, you kind of use face references as as kind of points. Right. So you'll kind of like if you say if you want to do um, a mid mid skin fade, uh, you, you'll you know you'll gauge that from a that's what that's some of the thing one of the things that I teach in terms of use the face structure as as reference points mm. for for your you know doing your doing your lines and doing your fades and stuff like that. So there's kind of like. Um, 
you know, the stuff in place that you can kind of implement to, to, for, that, for, for that not to happen. No good if someone's bong eyed though. I do, I do, I do say that as well. If like, if someone's maybe had a stroke yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, like, you just <laughs> check your eyes, or, <laughs> check your eyes at straight first, pal. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just be sure, man, it's because I look at them eyes a minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know, so, you know, with you obviously being into sort of fashion and your style and how you look and all that side of things, you will have always cared about your hair yourself. You've got a crack. Yeah. You've got a crack yeah. hairline. It's not. It's no lie. Yeah. But do you remember doing that first trim for the first time? Because that that must be a scary moment. Like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I started off in the hair industry, um. So I was kind of um doing doing women's hair, and I was. I remember. I remember petrified because especially if you were doing, um, a, f- a female, and if they were especially if they were a little bit attractive. And you were kind of like, you know, you want to kind of come across confident and you know what you're doing. Whereas really you're like, oh, shit, I'm, 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 I'm terrible at this. So I remember being, I remember being petrified of, of that. Yeah. But, you know, like any form of skill set, you're always going to be shit. You're always going to be shit at first. Yeah. But when you, when you're younger, you can't, a lot of the time you can't digest that because you, you've got that ego fear. Um, but that, that's what I kind of tell me, le- tell if I'm, if I'm teaching them, I'm just say, listen, at first you're going to be shit. Just accept it. Just accept the process. And with time, with repetition, we ultimately will get there. So that's what I, yeah, everyone's shit when they first start. Like you know anything. I mean? No one's a wizard with a pair of, with a, you know, a, a scissors and a comb first. Yeah. But that was something that I, fa- that was something that I, fa- that I struggled with actually. So when I decided to be a hairdresser, I'd done a, I'd done a course and I was the worst in the class by a mile because all the girls, they were used to dealing with long hair, putting their, you know, as girls, you put plaits in your hair, they, they used to playing with it. Whereas I was like, never, I wasn't used to it. So I was the worst in the class by a mile. And that was something like, I've all, I, I always liked to, to be good at stuff. So that was something that I, you know, really struggled with at first was like, I'm, I'm the worst here by, by a mile, but... Like I said, I think if you've got a passion for something and you and you're into it, ultimately that will always kind of like prevail and you'll end up kind of getting where you want to be just through passion. It's a pretty cool thing to say that once upon a time Anth was in in his class, worst in the class, by yeah. a mile in your own yeah. words. Yeah. And fast forward in time, you are now an educator yeah. and you are teaching people yeah. how to cut hair. Yeah. That's a, that's it must give you a lot of pride. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's cool. Actually, I I still speak to the uh, the woman who 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 taught me, right? Um, and that is quite that that's that's kind of cool, kind of like, you know, I've, I've evolved into in into teaching. But like I said, I think um, you know, if I was ever to give some advice to you know, I'm a, I'm a dad now, and it would be one of the bits of advice was look look at just you know find try and find your passion because I think if you've got a passion you're always going to be under a winner, really. And you're probably always kind of like, there was one, there's one quote I, I found, it's like, try and find your gift. Mm. Find your gift, whatever that is, and kind of go towards go towards it. Sad thing is, some people get through the whole life and never find out what that is. I know, you know? it is. I know, it, it really is. You, you know, most of, the, most of the time, you you will hear that. Um, that's why I think, you know, having my mindset, that, that type of angle on it, I suppose in, in today's world, I suppose, unlike in the olden days, there's more chance of you finding what that <clears> gift is because, th- you know, there, there is a lot more opportunity nowadays. So, yeah. you know, like I say, for your child is when, when they get of age, they've got a very different game or, or should, very different options. Should we say amount of options than somebody that was born a hundred years ago? Yeah. You know, yeah. so, yeah. you know, of course not everybody's going to find it, but there's, there's more opportunity to yeah. find it than there ever has been. Yeah, there it, is. You know, and it's, I think there's, there's nothing wrong with trying new things. You know, you never, you know, it's quite a corny thing to say, but you're never too old to start something. No, I don't think, no, you know, absolutely not. if somebody listens to this podcast and they think, you know what, I've always wanted to be a hairdresser, you yeah. know, if you're 45, 50, this doesn't mean you can't start. No, absolutely you know? not. So absolutely not. Tell us about the, um, has it got, a, it does have a name. So I haven't done my research properly. Your, your tuition, your teaching. Yeah. It's, it's called something, right? Uh, Mr. Hutton's. Okay, well, Mr. Hutton's Barbering Academy. Barbering that, Academy. That, that's 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 what it was. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I still do that. I'm currently um, doing a bit of that now. Hmm. Um, d- 
did, did it take off as well as I hoped? Probably, probably not. But it's it's a private course, and kind of like in this world that we live in now, especially with 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 money, you know, someone forking out um, for a barbering course mm. is. Um, it's a, it's a bit of a risk, isn't it? Do you mm. know what I mean? Kind of like sacking off what you're doing for a living, or um, and doing doing a career change. Is it? It's a bit of a risk. You know um, what I was thinking about is, um, am I correct in assuming that the barbering course is by day? <clears throat> yeah. So this is what I was thinking. Not that I'm giving you advice or anything. But I was thinking twofold. What you've just said. Number one, for somebody to be doing nothing for many days during the week, they probably don't have a job. So therefore, they probably haven't got the money unless the privilege and somebody's helping them out in some way. So I was thinking, wouldn't it make more sense? Look at me giving you barren advice. Wouldn't no, no. it make more sense to make it on a night? Yeah, but potentially. I have, I have, I have thought about that. The only thing is, that, so the we'll, we'll probably touch on this later. But the I me mean, never throw on the towel project has um, kind of threw us through a spanner in the works about everything. And at, at the minute, like I've got. Um, I'm a, a working barber. I've got the Barbering Academy. The Never Throw on the Towel project has came about. I'm in the process of setting the Never Throw on the Towel charity. I'm a dad with the two. I'm a dad, two and a half year old son, with a baby on the way in in a few weeks. My head's fried. <laughs> As we said to the sky the other day, that you haven't got a couple of plates spinning. You've got the whole dinner set. Yeah, and I'm terrible logistically. Right, I am useless. Right, I'm all over the place. Okay, <laughs> controls uh, controlled chaos. Yeah? yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it's you know life's like that, isn't it? It's it's just it's just. And I try to be conscious of that because with all that, you know, if you ask me what 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 what's the most important thing to you. It's me family. Right. What gets compromised with all of that I've just mentioned? My family. So it's just trying to kind of, trying to go, whoa, mm. whoa. So I think, to be honest, the, um, unless I, unless I ha had, you know, five people wanting to do a barbering course, I don't know whether I'll pursue it mm. based on me other, me other commitments and stuff. I suppose you could always make it just, you know, something that you do offer. If somebody was to approach you, yeah. you know, just a private person, yeah. you know, DM you. Yeah, yeah. Hi, mate, you know, could you teach me how much? Yeah. And you could take them as a, an yeah. apprentice. Is that a thing? Where somebody like shadows you? Yeah, yeah, that's, that. it is a, it is a thing. That the kind of, the model that I do, it's basically like a 12-week, 12-week um, intense course where I deliver NVQ level two um, qualification. And it's kind of like, it's it's kind of a, like an, an intense um, fast track course, right? Okay. Really, that that's kind of like the format of it. I am um, in terms of like the apprenticeship model. I don't know, um, but like you said, me, I'll always cut hair. I will always cut hair. But um, me, my never throw on the towel project is through a, a, a really, a really good spanner in the works, which has mm. kind of taken me kind of other places in my career. Mm. Yeah, what we'll do, um, because that is a big part of the stuff I want to ask you about. Yeah. It, it genuinely interests me. Yeah. What we're going to do, um, we normally do this now, we're going to have a dead quick break. Yeah. Um, whilst we do have a break, there's going to be a quick word from our sponsor. And when we come back, we will take a look at Never Throwing the Towel Project. Back to you in the studio. Back to you in the studio. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a business thinking about starting one? Dash, the bespoke web design and branding experts. When you have a business that needs a professional online presence, when your current website is starting to look a little outdated and tired, when you have an idea and want to see it brought to life online, that's where Dash can help. Dash create bespoke websites built around your business and its requirements, from exceptional e-commerce stores to sell your products online, to beautiful brochures showcasing who you are and what you do. The team at Dash will become an extension of your business. You'll be assigned a dedicated team who will help guide and advise from the initial design brief all the way to the website launch. Not only that, Dash provide full aftercare to carry out any changes, alterations or updates quickly and efficiently. It's like having your very own personal web development team 365 days a year. Dash understands that in today's world, the right online image, exposure and representation is the key to success. Book in a free, no obligation consultation with one of their experts today to see how Dash can make your online vision an online reality. 
Just visit www.dashmedia.co.uk or search Dash Media on Google to find out more. Dash, the bespoke website and branding experts. How long have you been rolling so far? Uh, just 30 minutes, like 29 minutes before we stopped. So Perfecto. We're, we're nice. Cool. Okay, so... How, do you, how long do you normally work, work from? Anything over an hour. Right. You know? Yeah. Can be Qual- an hour. Quality over quantity we try do and know, do we, now. We, we've done some daft long ones for like two hours and 45 minutes. And right. You know, like anything in the world, you, you learn as you go on. Mm. I don't know anything about podcasts. It's not like listening to them. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we've started this in September. And as I've got to hear now... I admit, when it gets to an hour, even when I'm listening to any podcast, I'm switching off. Yeah. I never listen to the whole thing. Mm, yeah. So literally a few weeks ago, we start, We thought, do you know what? Let's let's get these between an hour and an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And yeah. some, you know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. if it goes on, it goes on. Yeah. But um, I don't believe anyone's sitting for a full three hours listening to a three-hour podcast. <clears throat> Who's no. got three hours? I think any in regards to that... It's it's like a, a best a best man's speech at a wedding. It can go too long. Yeah, you need to, you 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 want it in that time frame where it's like boom 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 boom. That was class. The sweet spot. Yeah. 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 I have uh, Spidey sense tells me it's between an hour and an hour and a half. Mm, I that's, would agree. That's what Spidey yeah. sense tells me. Mm, I think. Yeah. My favorite ones I listen to are always an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah. Except if you're Joe Rogan, when you're in the encyclopedia of the fucking world, yeah. where you can just talk to anybody on any level about anything, and yeah. most of the time, outdo them. Yeah. Fuck you, Joe. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I feel so... Um, Dumb. So lucky. Um, I actually got to I got to see Joe Rogan in a real small, intimate stand-up show. What? Yeah. So it was... So I, I've always been a, like, a huge UFC fan. Right, like, right from... I remember, I remember specifically... Buying UFC number one from the video shop wow. with with me uncle and anyway, we was kind of into it and then came across Joe Rogan and then I've always been a huge fan of comedy and then came across his comedy on YouTube and I was like I didn't know he was into comedy and then started watching his stuff and I was like he is absolutely hilarious and then remember um, me and my mate were really into him and we found out that he was doing a um, a comedy show. In London, so we like you know bought tickets and it was a memories around about 150 people were there. No it way! Was, aye, it was such a box ticked. So uh, you found it? Did you know about the podcast before the the comedy? If I remember rightly, because we like I said, I was a I was a I was a fan of Joe Rogan, and I think he maybe uh, he'd started doing a few, but there wasn't there wasn't many. Like right. there wasn't um, who was the who was his pal who he used to do it with? What was his name? Oh, Redman. Redman. Oh, Redman, yeah. whatever. Redman, yeah. Because they were sponsored by that uh, that wanking, um, that, uh, was it Fresh Light? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you could, like, um, not that I got one, but you could, like, you could, <laughs> it, it, came, it came with goo that you heated up in the microwave, didn't you? Oh, God. That, 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 I mean, how how serious are you taking your wanking game? I know, by yeah. the way, if you, if, you, if, you, if you were purchasing, like, I mean, what, like, what's wrong with just a normal, yeah. you know, with one of the... <laughs> Still, you know what I mean? seconds, ding, it's time, here we go. <laughs> look, I mean, look. We're Sorry, la- that made it No, no, listen, lads, we're, we're laughing, but like, we're laughing, but let's be quite frank. <laughs> Let, let's be quite frank. We, we're, we're, you know, I'm just saying. Oh, I'd try it, yeah. You know, you, you just... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just saying, you know, if, if you're in a hotel and <laughs> yeah. you, you open the drawer and, you know, you know, for use of the of the of the To be guests. honest, the, the, I totally, uh, the, the, the heated, the heated gooey situation was, mm. was, I was like, all right, <laughs> like, that, that, that makes sense. <laughs> Pricing them up. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. Do they come in discreet boxes, you know? <laughs> I could send it to my mate's house, you know, <laughs> one of them. <laughs> well, listen, we're back. We've all had a, um, a break. Um. So, um, yeah, okay, I'm going to go straight in. Can you tell us, Anth, what Never Throw in the Towel project is? <clears throat> the Never Throw in the Towel project, so it's um, we, it's a mission to try and tackle and fight against this awful problem that we've got with male suicide mm. and kind of men's mental health. That's that's kind of like what, what the aim is. Um, there's kind of, at the moment, there's two main things that I that I do with the project. It's um so I do guest speaking. I'll go to wherever I'm a factory, normally male dominated places, and I'll do a talk and then I have a pop up barber chair uh, straight after the talk. 
because my open and honest talk followed by the intimacy of the one-to-one barber chair, it really kind of, in it really just nudges blokes to kind of open up in the chair, especially kind of after the talk that we've had, but in a natural way, not like, I think if you say to blokes, you, you know, come and see me for a talk, you probably wouldn't get any blokes to come and talk, but come and see me for a free haircut. That will trigger conversations. And then there's, I do basically the free retreats that I run every month where we do a walk and talk. We do boxing in some circuits, exercise out in nature. We do some breath work. And the reason for the breath work is the preparation to get into the, the cold water. Mm. Um, none of it's really been, this wasn't a plan. It's kind of, um, it comes from a really special place in my heart. And it's kind of, um, this project, if it's ever made me believe in fate, this kind of project has made me kind of believe in fate. It comes from, like I said, a special place. And uh, yeah, it's a fan, been a great journey so far in doing it. What, if you don't mind me asking, if you would like to share or not, what, what is that special place? So I've, I've kind of, this, for me, life's about stories. And this is probably... Probably, probably be my favourite story, really. Mm. So, it, so I got brought up by my grandma. Had such a, um, such a special, beautiful relationship with my grandma. Like she was, me, me dinner lady at school. We li- we actually lived next door to the school. So for my packed lunch, she would actually like bring me mince and dumplings, corned beef pie. It was beautiful. It was it was unbelievable. Like and everyone like the whole. Ev- she was like such a famous person at the school like everyone adored mrs hutton and um i mean on a side note like she racked when i won big brother um when it was time to win you basically had to pick up the phone and vote and she like racked up a six thousand pound phone bill just to get to get me the for no me to win way. <laughs> yeah what well, yeah. she just called again and again it was and like again. A, it was like a military operation it was she was even getting like yes. kids from the street it was like the, it was the, the fa- there was like fam like different family members. It was like a total operation. Get the whole street involved. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. yeah. Love Fantastic, that. Woman. beautiful. And um, so when she when she passed away, um, I wanted I I done my grandma's eulogy, and I wanted I wanted to kind of I wanted the eulogy to finish on a positive on a positive spin. And my grandma she had uh, stage four cancer. And she got stage four cancer in 2014. And her attitude, her mentality so of, 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 how, of that adversity, she, she changed her nutrition. She like, pre, well, she went plant-based. Wow. She, do, she ended up um, taking um, cannabis oil from, from research. She'd done everything she possibly could and she never ever complained. She was, in, she was a picture of health for years because of, her fight and spirit and she she got that in 2014 and she she um passed away at, at uh, 2022 I feel so fortunate because she got to meet me son which i feel like so blessed about that she got to meet me boy and right at the end of the eulogy i i used the words um so the project's called never throw on the towel strap line keep on living and those are the words that I used right at the end of my grandma's eulogy. Mm. And straight after, straight after the funeral, I was outside the church with my mum, and this bloke came up to us who I'd never met, who attended the funeral, and he um, he was in, he was in he was in bits. He was crying, but he said thanks so much for that eulogy. And he went, "Your grandma was an absolute amazing woman, and she'd be super proud of you." And the same night. I got a message request. I was at my mum's house, obviously all upset. I got a message request on my phone, pinged up. Looked, had a look at my phone, and it was um, same block who I, who I'd spoke to, and he just he sent me a big long message, sharing with me that he'd been really uh, struggling with his mental health. He'd been seeing professional help. He's in a, a really dark place, but he just wanted to know that the words that I used never throw on the towel really really hit home with them and that it lit it lit there was some fire that that got lit and it it inside kind of, of you you mean yeah right there, there was just a fire that 
and based on previous experiences that I've had in my life, um, of of being experiencing and being in a being in a really bad place, being a barber, I've experienced a few customers who've been in a really bad place. That was kind of like the final nudge that I needed because I it t- I unknowingly helped a bloke there with a story and with some words and it kind of highlighted the power of words and the power of the story. So I randomly started literally Googling how to be a guest speaker hmm. on men's mental health. Total just, I was like, I'm going to start talking on this topic. And I'd messaged a couple of agents of like speaking agents. No one got back to me. And then randomly a woman got in touch with me who I'd done pantomime with years ago. And she she said, oh, listen, I'm, she lived in London. She went, I'm doing a, um, an event in Newcastle. I'd love you to be a part of it. I'd love you to be on the panel. Um, and I was like, okay, what, what, what is it? And she went, well, it's, it's a well-being. I've got this project called the Happy Me Project, um, but it's like a guest speaking event, and I'd like you to be on the panel at the end. And I just said, do you mind if I be a speaker? Hmm. And she was like, oh, okay, what, what about? And I kind of said, listen, I've got a story. I'm very passionate about men's mental health and tackling this problem that we have. I'd, I'd love to be a speaker. And so she got back to me and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you to be a speaker. What do you want to call your talk? And it was like, the talk's going to be called Never Throw on the Towel. Hmm. That's where it was born. That's where it was born. Hmm. Well, technically it was born at Unanna's eulogy, but that's where it came into play. Yeah. Real, real, real special, special place. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that is about as, as special as it comes, I think. Yeah, the, I, um, <clears throat> at the beginning when you used the word like fit, I wasn't sure where, how mm. that would fit together, but yeah, 100% that's fit. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, every time I talk about my grandma and it's mad, like she... She just never, she never missed anything in my life. Like when I used to, I remember there was one time where I, I was doing this cross country run. I used to be a, used to be a really good runner, and um, I was, it was like a dinner time, this this race, and it was like wet. It was raining in a muddy field, and no, there was no parents there at all. I remember lining up, and I remember looking up, and in the woods there was this woman, and I remember, and I was like. Asked me grandma. No she was way. the only person that she she just she wouldn't miss anything. And, oh man. And yeah, and it's like she always used to she always used to kind of boast about she was the first person to uh to pick me up when I was born. And I ha- I held her hand on her last breath. And I and I just think, you know what, I feel as as much as it was so hard. Seeing the passing of me, Gran, I just think, how blessed am I of doing? I've done that full circle of life wow. with you, and now and then this and then this kind of project happening. I'm like, I still I still talk about you, Gran. I still talk about you all the time. So it's yeah, it comes from a real. So like but, she, she, your Gran welcomed you into the world, and you wished her farewell. Held a hand on last breath. Wow. Wow, I've got goosebumps there. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, really. Uh, yeah, that's. And I was really, I was, I was hell bent on, because she was, she wasn't very well. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't looking good. And it's, it's, she was a very, 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 very religious woman. She was really religious. Like every time I used to leave the door, she always used to rub holy water on my head. She was. Really? She was, yeah, she was really, really religious. And um, I remember I was. I wanted to be there when she when she passed. I was I was hell bent on that. So I was traveling from Darlington to concert every single day after I finished work. I was going there, going there, staying with us, staying at staying at a house. Mate, I was hell bent of like I didn't want to get a phone call to be told she's passed away. I wanted to be there. And I remember Saturday had come, and I was walking to work, and obviously my head was my head was kind of just in bits and. Um, but then someone came over me and I literally, and I, and I end up texting me mum and I end up texting me gran. This was on the Saturday and I thought, you know what? Because it was me christening on the Sunday, my son's christening. She, I had to get this um, christening quickly done 
because I thought she has she has to be there. Like I need to get she she wants me son christened. That's our, that was our last request. I was walking to work and I thought if there was ever a day that she could pick of of the of the week, it would be a Sunday that she would that that she would want to go because she's so religious. And I and I th- and I thought she's gonna go tomorrow and she's gonna and she's gonna share the same date with me son. Is they're gonna share that day? And um, and I text me I text me mum. I've texted me uncle. I've got it, it blows me mind. And I said, you know what, grandma would want to go on a Sunday. And I said, I think she's gonna, I think she's gonna pass on a Sunday. And I'd kind of like accepted, accepted it, because at first I was deludedly in hope, thinking, no, she's not, she's gonna pull around, she's gonna pull around. And um, sure enough, for early hours Sunday morning, she passed away, and I was like, she never ever let me down. Sounds so. Uh, from an outside looking in, it sounds like you and your grandma had some kind of like. Obviously, everybody has a connection to the relatives, but it sounds like you and your gran had something else, like a different type oh, of yeah. connection. Oh, yeah. Like, when I won Big Brother, it was the first words I said was, Granny Hutton, I've done it. Like, no wonder I've done it. She spent six grand on a phone bill, like, but... <laughs> <laughs> Money well spent. Yeah, you know, well, yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know. Yeah, but... Um, Bless her. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's where the... Uh, that That's where kind of, like, the project comes from. Yeah, that's a pretty special reason you know people ask us you know why is it called people like us and like our answer is pretty lame but like you know so you're, you're that that's that's about as good as it gets really yeah. for for a name um when I, I i've seen it kicking about on social media seen you doing some promotion and stuff of it um but i didn't know that that that's where it was from so that's um thank you for sharing that so um tell me about if, if you don't tell us about the um the retreats and stuff. So uh, you do, so what goes on in these, I know you touched on it briefly, this cold water therapy, <clears throat> you know, a bit yeah. of boxing. Well, what does a day look like? So it's, I'll just kind of, it, again, it's, it's, it, it just kind of, it's just, I find it fascinating how it's come together. So in November, you know, Movember, men's, men's, the month of men's mental health, yeah, yeah. I always, I'll always do something for that, for that month. So I decided to, um, last November, I, done free haircuts on a Tuesday right. because it said Bob Chair is one of the best places to talk. If anyone wants to come and have a talk and, and, and have a free haircut, I'm here. And I decided to um, do a man's retreat. It was, I was kind of flirting with it, with the idea of it. If I just thought it was a good, you know, I thought it was a good idea, but there was only um, nine, nine men who'd kind of signed up to doing it. So I was, I was actually thinking, oh, it's not not very good turnout. This, like, should I should I pull the plug? Um, it, is it a good idea? It's maybe it's not a good idea because there's only kind of nine nine people turned up to it, and I was actually, to be to be perfectly honest, I was actually considering like pulling the plug on it. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, and just think it was like no, there's not many turned up. But anyway, there was there was there's a there's a dad and his two boys who say I cut. The, they're all they're all they're like grown men, but um, one of them is really struggling, and his his dad actually got in touch with us, and he and he, and he sent us a message saying, really looking forward to this retreat. Um, actually, I'll not mention his name, but he's really he's really struggling. He he's had to come home from uni, and he's not in a good headspace. So I think it'd be really good, like really good for him to for us to kind of do something together out out in nature. So that kind of like was like. All right, okay, so this is going ahead no matter what now. I have to do it. And we done the re we done the retreat. And it was just absolutely class. And it was meant to be a one off. And every lad in the WhatsApp group was like, um, that was unbelievable. Like the, a lot of them hadn't done cold water. Mm. And like they were messaging saying, I feel like I felt unbelievable afterwards. Like unbelievable. And I was like, I told you. I was like, you get the dopamine hit. It's unbelievable. It's better than a scoop. <laughs> well, the, uh, Dana White's doctor, he'll, he, he he does say, you do that, that will be the drug, drug of choice. Mm. Um, and so... The, it was and I and I loved it and I was like that was class I, I like I, I absolutely love that so we we basically um basically said when's the next one mm. 
Mm. Like, let's do another one. So got a bit of content on it and put it on social media. The second one, there's 31 blocks turned up. Oof. And I and I was like, wow, this is uh, this is jumping off. This is this is class. And it was we done that and it was the camaraderie that we had right at the end. Right at the end, I said, um, countdown to 10. I went, we all dunk under. And we all dunked under. And it was just like, ah, oh, fucking come on. <laughs> it was just like, ah. <laughs> like, honestly, blokes, blokes cuddling each other. It, like, Beautiful. Like, it was just total man love. And it was, <laughs> it was just, it was just, um, came and we got, we got that, we caught, we caught that on, we got that on footage. Yes. We caught we caught that, and again, and I came away. Just I drove away, and I was just like, "Fucking whoa!" <laughs> like supercharged. Yeah, it's pumped, and pumped again, and we, again we put that, stuck that on social media, and that that exploded. Like the, I think one there was over five hundred shares on one of the one of the videos. Wow. Then at this point, I. ITV signed, we'd, so we'd, we decided we're going to do another one because that was unbelievable. So then at this point, um, ITV signed T's News had um, it, seen what I'm doing. So they said, oh, can, you know, can we come along to the next one? Um, and then I'd actually met this, um, this Northeast director who does movies and does um, documentaries top law called Paul Suggett, he said, this is, this, this could, this should be a documentary on this. Okay. And mm. I shared me, I shared me story, what I'd do. And he went, this needs to be a documentary. So anyway, the third one we're doing, and then we, again, we did, we didn't have an event right up. We, we, we didn't really know how many people were going to turn up. We thought there was going to be a lot turned up. Anyway, the, the third one, there was 72 blocks turned up. Jesus. There was just continue, there was cars continue. And it was just like, in it, in it, it just and it was like ITV we, we were there and it and again it was just like unbelievable. But it's such a I mean you need you 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 need to come the next yeah. a little plug the next one's um, June thirtieth and it's you you can't go wrong. It's for, I I always say this for me especially in this modern day world we live in with suicide at the most highest it's ever been with pe people working from home. We've got social media with this, uh, you know, this sh huge shop front of comparison that we all go through. Um, getting out in nature, exercising is one of the best forms of medicine. Mm. Absolutely. So I think you should, we, we, we should be implementing that, even if it's not, we're not particularly interested in us, we should probably be implementing that type of stuff into our lifestyles. And it's, like you said, the camaraderie, the brotherhood is fantastic. Mm. Um. You just touched on that a few things there, um, social media and, and this, that, and the other. Do you so? Do you think mental health is on the rise? Yeah, you do. I think so. Yeah, I'm going to try and give. Um, from what I see, it's it's evidently been talked about more. I'm going to try and give some opposing opinions on okay. some of these things as well. I'm going to try and yeah. be the devil's advocate, okay. on it, just to play the game. You know, mm -hmm. do you know? Obviously, as we say, it, it would appear that mental health is on the rise, right? Because it's also trendy, though. That was my question. Yeah, it is also trendy. Is it... I, I'm going to repeat some things I've heard said. Is it that people are too soft now? Um, I think this... I think this modern-day world we live in is soft. I would absolutely agree with you on that one, personally speaking. Um, I think... Yeah, I think we need to be tougher. I mean, this is why one of the things that are implement in um, is the boxing. So, in some, so that's the only. Th it's, the feedback's been great, but that's the only kind of pushback that we've had is um, is from the boxing. Like one guy was like one 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 bit of the one bit of negative negativity that we had of, of feedback, and he was being you know totally genuine about it. But he was like, it's it's a bit less. Um, it's not a kind of brotherhood, and it's kind of like you know that I, I don't think the boxing uh, it's not uh, not for me. And my angle is, um, one, I think everyone should be able to defend themselves. 
with some basic with some basic with some basic knowledge of just simply of even just how to block a punch. Like I actually think that should be that's something that as well as swimming, I think some form of self defense knowledge. I think we should probably all have that. Um, and I think we're, we're, we're not, you know, we're a lot more resilient than we think. Mm. And that, and that's kind of one of the, you know, one of the reasons why I kind of implement the boxing. Um, so yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. Personally, I, I do agree with that, uh, the, um, but I'm probably, you know, more of a man's man than, than, that I do, I, I I agree. I think all children should be taught it. You know. Yeah. I mean, what right do I have to say I've got no kids? But I agree, though. I I, I do think, you know, l- learning some self defence is a good idea. But I am also not blind to the fact that I do know there are individuals in this world that are their whole core, not just their opinion. Their whole core is anti violence and anti. So like boxing is kryptonite. But to what them. are you going to do if a violent situation is get gets put onto you? Well, yeah, I mean, this is what I would say to them. You know, I, I would say this to them. But um, that one chap you've mentioned, I think, um, you know, I, I think, you know, he, he is a rarity, but he won't be alone. So, some, yeah. some men are, are and women are just <clears throat> not about that life. You know, my personal opinion is is I think it's a good idea. Even if you, you know, even if it's just for for an activity, if it's just fitness, you know, moving around, yeah. you know, in a way, if you don't want to do boxing, you know, I mean, what's wrong with something similar moving about, you know? Yeah, I'm, I am the the most placid person you'll ever meet. Like, it's not, it's not about. I'm, I certainly don't condone violence. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But, but also, you know, for example, be, being a dad. I do not want. I would not want my 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 son to be bullied. Mm. And if he came to me, and there was someone who was bullying him, I would take measures of like doing it properly and doing it professionally. If that continued to happen, he would be getting instructions of straight right left hook. Like Southpaw, <laughs> um, that you know that 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 that's just me being honest. And I draw. I, I don't think that's a ludicrous opinion. No, I, I personally don't either. I, I personally agree with that approach. I think, um, you know, per- personally, when I when I was younger, it it probably would have served me well. I was before I go any further. I had great parents, right? Yeah. I was spoilt rotten. Got everything I ever wanted. Was taking the holidays, everything. But there was a gap in my upbringing. And I was never taught to fight. I, 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 and <clears throat> that that bit was just missed, not through anyone's choice, not because my dad's a wuss. My, dad's, my dad is a man's man. Yeah, yeah. He's a big, massive bruiser, and I have, have every belief he probably could fight. Yeah. But I was never taught that bit, and that resulted in bullying yeah. because I ran. Yeah. And what happens at school when you run? They chase you. Yeah. And then it just spirals yeah. out of control. You know, it's like anything, you know, I mean, a greyhound will chase a rabbit when it runs, you know, or 100%. a hare, whatever it is. So, um, facing fear, that's yeah, that that's yeah, f- facing this as, is, as, is the approach as savage as it sounds. And again, this is you know, for the you know, for the vegans out there, this is probably going to rub them up the wrong way. But I, if I actually wish, and again, if people have kids, they're probably going to go, that's you can't do that. I actually wish if I could have my time again when I got chased home by the bullies, I wish there was a man in the house who marched me back outside mm. and said, you shall hash it out, who yeah. watched over. And obviously he didn't get out of control, <laughs> but taught me to yeah. go after them. That was something I had to learn on by myself, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it probably would have saved me a lot of turmoil. And yeah. as savage as it sounds, going out and making a kid fight, as savage as it sounds, you're probably doing them a favour yeah. in life. You're nipping it in bud. I see, obviously I used, to have a, I used to have a bar. So I obviously seen... Um, a lot of altercations, and I remember um, seeing this this young lad. Obviously, just was seemed a, a nice lad, and there was a there was basically a confrontation. And he 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 was he was, he was extremely submissive, and he was there was obviously he dealt with some rough or some some dickhead lad, and he he got punched straight in the face, and he he like he was like Ugh, like he, and then. The the lad done it again, and the like. The cops were coming, and I was just going, mate, just fucking, just just do, just do that. Mm. But obviously, 
had zero knowledge um, of what to do. Mm. And I, again, I just think, it, at least if he knew how to block a punch, mm. he, he might not have had his nose splattered all over his face. No. Do you no. know what I mean? It, it, is a, it is a funny topic and, you know, you'll definitely get people who, who agree and disagree with it. Um, I just can't see any any harm in knowing what to do. You know, as you say. Yeah, that, uh, especially if you if you speak to people who m m most, you know, there's always going to be dickheads in every, in any field, but oh, most people yeah. who do martial arts are kind of like do boxing. They, they, can, they, they, they tend to conduct themselves very well. True. And, and like I said, I'm not condoning violence at all. Like, I, I'm Mr. Funtime Frankie. Like, I never, <laughs> you know, I never, I, I'm a lover, I'm a lover. Um, but but I just think, um, you know, I think everyone should know how to, in some way, like, know how to defend themselves. It it makes sense, doesn't it? When you, when you be practical about it, you know. Yeah. It, it sort of makes sense. It does, doesn't it? Now? Yeah. You know, I don't know whether we went off topic there, but uh, what was the topic? The the it, question was: uh, are, are are people softer? And I, oh yeah, yeah, we agreed on that. No, but just yeah. just while we're still on that, like I'm a little lad growing up. Obviously, there were bullies and stuff around, and if I had been taught them same lessons, you know, just just fighting back just that once, just showing that you can handle yourself and showing a little bit of restraint, yeah. it would would have stood you in so much good stead. And that isn't something that bullies is being kind taught. of feed on weakness. 100%. If someone's like that, they will feed on that weakness. Whereas if you just, you know, for for example, if you just get stuck in, yeah, like. It's probably going to stop. And it not only aids that, it's like aids confidence and everything. You know, if you're able to yeah. walk tall, like it, it helps you in so many ways. 100%. And my, my dad always says, talk you out of any scenario. And I've been fortunate <clears> with my height to be able to do that. What, you're going to punch the smallest lad in the club? You're hard. You know, stuff like that ends up a lot of the time, mm. you know. It's, yeah, it, when you can, you can, to you can totally dilute, you can totally dilute that type of situation. But you know, if in the back of your head, if you kind of know, well, I, I half know at least what to do to yeah. make, like create some distance and at least you you're gonna you're gonna in turn just be a little bit more confident in the whole situation. It's just it's because very you've got, valuable. You've got that in the in the in the very back of the locker. Yeah. You've got it. Yeah, no, it's you know what we hear, what we're saying. Anyone that's listened to this, we're not saying train killers. We're just you know <laughs> yeah. we're, we're just saying yeah. yeah, we're just saying when no. when she, it's the fan have some steps to take yeah. to, you know, make it less bad than it could be. That's what I'm saying, That's yeah. all it needs to be. Yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be throwing a punch. Like no. you say, it could be blocking. It could yeah. be just creating distance. It could be, yeah. you know, just chill, you know? Yeah. Grab a leg, you know, bite a foot. I don't know, something, yeah. you know? It's what it is. But, um, you know, depression, right? Um, I'll tell you my story, right? Up until two years ago, I embarrassingly and I shamefully would not laugh, but ridicule somebody who said, I'm depressed, mm -hmm. right? Because I'd never experienced it, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually didn't believe there was any such thing. I actually just thought it's, it's a, you know, become trendy. Yeah. You're jumping on the bandwagons. You don't have to go to work so you can be idle. That's yeah. what I used to think. Yeah. And I genuinely believed it yeah. because I'd never felt it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I never said it directly to anybody, but yep. that's what I would think, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Now, about two years ago, maybe 18 months ago, not on, you know, God, not on some horrible state, but I did hit a bit of a cloudy time, let's just say, where I didn't feel great for a bit. Yeah. Um, and it humbled me because it made me think, huh, remember what you used to think? Yeah. Isn't it funny how, how mm. now you know it's not nonsense because you feel shit? Yeah. Um. But is the, the question is, is is depression a luxury? Do you have to be to a level of privilege to be depressed? So the, the, the example here is, is somebody in a war zone in Sierra Leone depressed who's starving? They, I bet there's very limited mental health issues in that country because they've got bigger problems. Yeah. And it, is there an aspect of you've got to be a level of privileged to feel depressed? It's a great, it's a, it's a great point. I think kind of the, the third world countries, the, from, from, 
from what I know, I don't think they tend to to get that. I remember, like, I remember I went out to Kenya to coach football wow. um, many, many years ago and um, they were the happiest kids. They, they didn't have anything. Mm. They didn't have anything and they were so, so happy. And like I touched on before, though, I think, <clears throat> I think with the, the shop window of comparison, I think that can really, um, really eat up into people. Mm. Um, like I'm, you know, I'm doing this. I, I'm certainly no expert in this, um, in the, in this, in this field. But I, I get, I get that. I get what you're saying there. I think, I think there's, um, I definitely think there's kind of some substance in, into what you're saying there. As I say, um, I'm coming to this. Remember at the beginning, I said, I'm literally just going to throw some opposing yeah. things that I've heard. Yeah. I have been on both sides of the fence. I have thought yeah. it's absolute nonsense. Then at Humble Pie and actually was depressed and thought, huh, never. Turns, yeah. out it, <laughs> turns out it's real. Well, you know, you know what though? Life, life circumstances, mm. life circumstances can, can you, they can come your way. Uh, you know, I, I went, I was in it. I got into, I was always, like I said, touched before fun time, Frankie. I experienced a really extreme taste of fame mm. and, and money and, Quick and when all. very extreme taste of fame, like o- overnight, not like I always kind of compare it to, you know, if someone's in a band or someone's an actor, they might get that, you know, oh, there's more people coming to the band, yeah, yeah, uh, the yeah. gig, whereas mine was wallop overnight. So when that, when that dried up and it got to the point where I need, I need to get a job here, but ego, pride, paranoia of getting a normal job cooked up in my head that I was I would get laughed at um, because I was known as Anthony from Big Brother or that, that or you know and again you know that was that, that that was probably mainly ego and paranoia on my end. I found myself starting to get in into a horrific headspace, and that you know that was. That was circumstances, that was stuff that had happened, you know, in my life. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't kind of like who I am as a person. I'm like this depressed person or whatnot. It was it was due to circumstances. So I think, you know, and you, and you obviously will get a lot more empathy if you've, if you've kind of touched that path, if you've been down that path. Do you know what I mean? If someone who hasn't got any empathy on that probably hasn't had any bad shit happen to them in their life and they'll maybe think that until... It happens to you, and then obviously you can. You're looking at it from a different angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Funny thing with me, like when I just my story, when I had bad things happen to me, I wasn't depressed. That that emotion was fear. You know, when bad things happen, I was never depressed. I was mm-hmm. in survival mode. There was no time for depression. Mm-hmm. I was anxious. Yeah. I was having nightmares. I was in. I was in. You know, adrenaline for yeah. about three years. Constantly. What was triggering that? Then was there anything in particular triggering it? Trig- triggering it? Yeah, I mean, something crazy was happening in life. Let's just say it's a diff. That's a big story for a different day. Right. But okay. let's just say I went to probably today the biggest thing that had ever happened in life. Pretty crazy shit. Right. And yeah, I went into a, a, an overdrive of of adrenaline, but it was fear. It was fight or flight. It was definitely not depression. It was yeah. furthest away from depression. I had no time for that nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. depression literally came from nowhere. Right. Literally from nowhere. It was no event. It was eight years after this horrific thing that had happened. It was in the past, you right. know? Definitely wasn't that that was depressing me. It right. was just all of a sudden just feeling... I'll tell you what I did, and I, I don't mind owning up to it. I did... Um, I don't know if anyone's the same as me. I'm a big, like, self-researcher. I am constantly YouTube and stuff, trying to improve stuff, constantly mm-hmm. listening and thinking and trying to learn... I mean, it might be quite, you know, egotistical. I'm only learning about how to fix me. You know, like, I'm not learning how to fix the world. I'm learning how to make me better. Well, I think I think that's a very natural trait. Yeah. And I'd um, stumbled across um, testosterone. Mm. And someone had said, mm. when I had testosterone, I was like, no, I don't want to be a meathead. I don't want to be one of them big muscle-bound meatheads. And someone was like, no, 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 no. That is japping a syringe full into you every week for three weeks and yeah. eating... 500 grams of protein a day. That's how you become a meathead. And they said, no, 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 no. If there's something called TRT, <clears throat> hormone replacement therapy, mm-hmm. that's what it's known as. Yeah. And basically, it's, my, my story started off as I actually wanted to do it properly. 
So yeah. I went to this clinic called Alphagenics. They're in Newcastle or something. Right, okay. And really cool uh, setup. Obviously, this telephone um, consultation thing ended in me giving them 400 quid. I thought, great, I'm getting what I want. No, no, that was for the talk. <laughs> and then the next day they said, oh, the nurse will be there to take your blood. And I was like, what? Anyway, literally, the next day at the office, this big black Lexus pulls up, right, with this nurse dressed, like, literally, like, in a nurse gear. It was like some out of a carry-on film. She came in, like, with a nurse gear and a little satchel, like a briefcase, anyway. She came up to the office, and I'm sat there thinking, what's going on? She takes my blood, she goes away, and they were going to test my blood for my levels, right? And I was like, yeah. this is easy. Like, this is brilliant. And I, I honestly believe that it was some kind of, like, or... Oh, this is what they've got to do to make it seem real, but really they're going to give me what I want. Do you know what I mean? Which was this TRT. Because the, Sorry, I've missed a bit of the story. The guy in the original phone call had said, we have to test your hormone levels first. Yeah. And if you're not below a certain level, obviously we can't prescribe it. Yeah. If you are, then we can prescribe it. I was fully in the belief that this was all just, you know, all just ramble and it was they they just had it. to be seen to be doing it. Do you know what I mean? Right, okay. Anyway, a few days passed. Um... I get a phone call. Ross, who's called Doctor Ross, and Ross um, said, "No, your um, your testosterone levels fine." Uh, and I was like, "Ah, oh, so is this way you like just give me it anyway?" And um, he was like, "No, can't do that. Lose my license." And I was like, "But I uh, paid you four hundred quid, boss." <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, you've had your levels done." I was like, "Right." I says, "Well, I'm going to go get it myself." And he went, "That's up to you, sir. But we can't give you it. Sorry." I said, oh, but I take creatine and lift weights. He said, maybe that's making it, maybe come back. So I said, hang on, what you expect me to do is not go to the gym for weeks, stop taking supplements to make myself feel worse so that you can retest me. And he was like, I'm not telling you to do that, but that's how you, so anyway, me and Ross fell out, long story short. And then I thought, well, I'm going to take it upon myself. So then I sourced um, a bottle, little bottle of it, um, realized you needed syringes. Um, ordered them off Amazon. Right. So you can picture me, absolute weapon. <laughs> what are you doing this? You know, we're literally watching YouTube videos. I'm like, which vein do I put it in? They're like, not a vein, you fucking idiot. You put it in your bum cheek. So I was literally about to put it in my fucking bloodstream. Do you know what I mean? You, funny, I'd have had a heart attack probably if I did that. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, um, this, what I'm about to tell you is the truth, right? Figured out how to do it. And you take a very, very, very small amount. It's a few drops. Yeah. That, that's what you take if you're doing TRT, right? <clears throat> Com compared to what, you know, it's, I mean, a, a meathead, yeah. sorry, somebody who it, must take about 50 times more. It's mm -hmm. a very, very small amount. Yeah. I put this very small amount in me. And honestly, I'm, I don't know if you've ever thingied it, but within 30 seconds, I felt this rush of euphoria come over me. And yeah. I stayed on that stuff for a year. Right. Um, I got off it in January gone. I right, did it okay. for a year and I never felt a dark day in that year and I felt fantastic. The entire time felt amazing. Yeah. Then stopped because thought, um, I haven't seen my testicles for about a year and thought I might need them. I've had no kids. So mm. I thought I'm going to get off this for a bit. Mm. Did, obviously it was horrific, obviously coming yeah. off it. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy to report my testicles are back. <laughs> but where, where, I, where I was going with it is uh, testosterone. Um, yeah, great great point that you've mentioned um so it's uh you know I, I do a lot of research i try to educate myself on this whole topic of mental health mindset and um i came came across of the the topic of testosterone which is a great point that you've mentioned because when you look at the statistics of um male suicide um it's r around the the late 40s um, it, I think the statistics have went up now, up to around about fifty-five or something. It might be more. I don't. I don't know the exact quotes, but lingering around that age is really bad for suicide. It, I think that that's like the top of the tree. Now, that initially looking at that, that was that would kind of like surprise me because I'm forty-two now, and I would consider myself in terms of like me mindset. I'm. I would say I was the best version of myself in terms of the way I think, me approach and me mindset. So that, purely off life experience. So kind of like that, looking at that age where you think, you know, people, these guys with vast life experience is the is the highest of suicide. Now, 
there's a lot of evidence in, in, in doctors. Like I said, I, I don't talk about this when I'm doing my talks because I feel as if I don't know enough about it. But there's, you'll hear doctors um, touching on how much of a factor the drop of testosterone is is contributing to male suicide and male mental health. Obviously, women get it, like with if they with their kind of like um, menopause, menopause mm. and stuff. Um, and again, the I think the biggest uh, the biggest uh, killer for cancer for men is testicular cancer. And why is why is that a case? If because of the drop of testosterone. So the TRT, the TRT thing, I think should be more spoken about. We should get more knowledgeable. I mean, I think it's more of a thing in America, isn't it? Yeah. And it's something that I would certainly consider um, consider getting. Can, can I be honest with you? Through um, that's where I heard about it, listening to American podcasts, right? And it learning, uh, having learned what I've learned now, and as you've just touched on, in America, it seems to be pretty much a free for all you can go to pretty much any these clinics aren't you know it's just got a little certificate to say they can prescribe it everybody's on it mm. no one's jacked to the gills everybody's no, yes, on it comes with that stigma doesn't it of like meathead yeah it comes with that there's a difference yeah totally but it's, it's 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 the idea is to bring yourself to a healthy or slightly above average so you can just be the best you yeah that's how you see these you know, this JFK, that president nominee, he's 70 odd year old and he, he yeah, yeah. he's jacked up, you know, yeah, like yeah. He, he looks phenomenal. I think if Joe Rogan's a good, if Joe Rogan's doing it, I, I, I'm, I, he's, he's 60. He's, if he's doing it, he's a good rule of thumb, isn't he? Yeah. And, and for the most part, it really, really pisses me off, mate, if you don't mind me saying, because I, you, more than anyone know, there are probably, I dare say hundreds of thousands of men in our country from all ages and the suffering, right? Mm -hmm. I am not saying for one minute a little bit of testosterone boost will fix their problems, mm -hmm. but I bet you it saves loads of suicides. Mm -hmm. I fucking bet you. Yeah, well, uh, but what you're saying though is is spoken about from doctors. Like the, there's, there's concrete um, evidence and professional doctors who are basically, you know, saying what, what you're saying there. And it should be readily available is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. That's what pisses yeah, me off. Yeah. And it'll be a money thing. That's yeah. what it'll boil down to. Yeah. It'll be, you know, funding, whatever. Yes, of course, it would cost a lot of money to, to introduce this. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's, okay, not, not just people dying, there's people suffering. Not everybody kills themselves. Yeah. Some people are just miserable and, yeah. and they're just really down and that affects other things. That affects how what how, well, how, motivation. Good, of a, how good of a father they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? How good of a husband they are, yeah. how good they are to the society. Yeah. There's so many domino effects, so many things totally. it reaches and touches. And not, they'll not have energy to go to the gym. We know the gym plays a huge part. Yeah. It, it, it just, it snowballs totally and it, right. Yeah, and it, it irritates me. Um, yeah. Can it I go for a quick me. piss? Is that yeah. an option? Yeah. We'll Absolutely. be right back. It's you, Ryan Time. I heard somebody years and years ago that I really, really, really looked up to talk about the importance of a scent and talking about <laughs> actually taught me to stick to a scent. <laughs> Said keep the same scent right. for a long period of time. Yeah. Pick your scent and never move off it. And because you'll become identified with that smell. Do you know what I mean? Mate, I, I, so when I lived in London, I came across Creed Aventus Oofed. and I'd never heard of it. And this, this really, this, um, this guy called Carlo, he was a fucking hairdresser. Of course cool, he was. Cool motherfucker. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I was like, what the fuck does that smell? <laughs> and he went, he went, oh, it's, uh, he had proper husky. He went, oh, it's, he went, it's called Creed. He went, Bex, where is it? And I was like, and I, I, I always, and I specifically remember it. And I kind of started trying to hunt for this, for this Creed Anyway, found found it, and it was like two hundred and fifty quid for a, for a bottle, and I was like, "That's that is expensive." Anyway, I thought, "Fuck it, I'm gonna get it." And then I was going back to Newcastle. And I was having a, a night out in Newcastle, and I fucking wore it, 
and I was in this nightclub called um, Top Top, and the vi- the VIP the VIP area was really small. It was very in, and birds were literally just fucking. I've never I've never had I'd never had reactions like this before in my life. Birds were literally sniffing me fucking neck, me neck, in me ear, and I was just like, "This is fucking gold dust," <laughs> and like no one had heard of it. Um, and then it's 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 became too popular and it's too common now and there's copies and all that type of stuff. But I, I'll never forget that. And I was like, wow, bro. There, if you really get the right perfume that agrees with your body mm. chemistry, a good perfume can be like a magic spell. <laughs> I shit you not, sir. It's a, it's literally a little bit of hocus pocus. I'm telling you. So I I, I I've got the um, the ombre nomad and. That had, that was the the that was the only fragrance that, that had a similar reaction to 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 the Creed. No other. I was so wanting a fragrance, um, that that like that hit me, and I don't mind the so the Ombre Nomad. Um, some people don't like it, but I it slaps you in the face. With, I, I call it offensive perfumes. I like offensive yeah. perfumes. Yeah. So what I mean by that is. A perfume should do one of two things, right? <laughs> it should either make somebody go, oh, my God, that's amazing, or, oh, my God, that's terrible. <laughs> but it has to offend. It can't be just like, mm, that's pleasant. It can't be that, because that's doing nothing for nobody. Do you know what I mean? It's got to be offensive. That's the rule. It's yes. true, though, right? I totally and agree. if you're spending 300 quid on a perfume, I want my next-door neighbours to smell it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want, oh, you have to be a few inches. Can you smell it? No, no, no. You're in a room with me. You know I'm wearing that perfume. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? I remember I told my mate that I'd, um, he actually believed me. I told him that I, I, told him that I had Creed toothpaste. <laughs> Creed toothpaste? <laughs> <laughs> he believed me. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Right. Bless him. I'm yeah. sure he's good at other things, you know? <laughs> Bless his soul. He went, what? He went, I went, mate, I went, I'm fucking joking. Mm. <laughs> nah, man, a, g- a good perfume, man. Um, yeah. Beautiful. I've never heard of that one, though. Not many people have. Mm. And that's what I, so the Ombre Nomad again started becoming a little bit more uh, more popular now. So, mate, I'm, I'm that weirdo, mate, that sits on a night watching YouTube videos about <laughs> perfume <laughs> reviews. Uh, what, um, what's his name? Um, who does all them? Uh, Jeremy. Yeah, he's uh, the yeah the guy yeah, with the white suit. Yeah, yeah. On. Watch, literally watch him all the time. He's one of my collection. One of yeah. one of the other guy I listen to is called. Listen to this for a name, the bow tie perfume guy. Heard uh, of him? Is, is he the black dude? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's him and this yeah. guy that wears the cap. He's the daddy. I forget his name. Oh, which one's I'll he? I'll send you it. Um yeah. He's tr- so he his story from what I can. He hasn't told his life story, but he always refers to when he grew up in Lebanon. Right, so his dad must have been Lebanese, mm. and he talks about that he was that he got to know these like Arabic fragrances and stuff like back mm. in the day. So like this is some deep rooting shit. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like yeah. some he was smelling like the 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 turmerics and the the spices and stuff, and it's, yeah. it's it's just obviously he's a gay guy too, which helps. Yeah, but he, he, he's. <laughs> Is he the goat? He's an he's the goat. He's an expert. Right, he's not okay. just Jeremy that's doing yeah, it for yeah, the yeah. For the, about the oh, look. No, there's some call. Yeah, yeah, no, this this guy's an absolute scientist. Mm. And he got me on to uh, Frederick Mal. Right. Yeah, and he calls it, I like, do you know what you can tell? He calls it the house of Frederick Mal. That's what they call mm. it, the house. So mm. like when you talk about Chanel, it's the house of Chanel. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he talks about... Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a deep oody yeah. kind of I mean, smell, that, isn't it? That isn't even the one you want. So that one is literally because I've run out of the other one. Oh, so really? I have two Frederick Mal's. The one you're smelling now is Promise. Right, okay. Um, it's my second favourite. It's my, it's my, sometimes I wear Promise. Right, okay. But the main one, and this is this cap guy, he did a poll and it was, if if you could have one fragrance forever, really? only one, if you're a man, what would it be? Now this guy, you know, for, for what it's worth, he's got millions and millions and millions of subscribers. He's been on the go for donkey's years. And through listening to everybody, I believe this guy's opinion. So mm. you can, you know, I, I can imagine I was interested to know what it was. And the winner was Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mal. Now, wow. the story is it was wow. originally a female perfume. Really? But it's changed now and only men wear it. Portrait of a Lady, what a name for a kickoff. 
And yeah, I'd name. never, I'd never great smelt name. it. I'd never seen it. This is now Frederick Marl has started to be in Phoenix and stuff in recent times. But back then when I first discovered it, you've, I'd never seen it. I'd never that's heard of what, it. But that's the appeal, isn't it? And I bought it blind. Portrait of a lady. I, I'd yeah. never smelt it, but just from, I mean, I'm a salesman, so I'm the best person to sell to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll yeah. buy anything of anyone, you know? Yeah. I'm gullible as you like. And I bought it and yeah, fam. Really? Fam, I'm telling you, man, pack the rest away. Really? Don't what, need what, it, man. What we're looking at retail? What's what we're it's, it's your 250 mark for right. the big one, your 150 for the little one. Same as the all the good ones at that price. Right. Promise what? is a bit dearer, I think. That's Promise next to it. Port, oh, port, yeah. But, no, I, I love the name already. But, What's your thoughts on the um, Halfetti range? The, um, the uh, what's it? Uh, Penhaligans. So that's uh, that's my mum's brand of choice. Is it? Penhaligans, because basically it doesn't blind bunny rabbits. That's what it's about. So it's an English company. My mum's bang into that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, she's not a racist, but she likes England. You know yeah. what I mean? But um, <laughs> she's all in, you know, this stuff that people are into, like where it's like animal cruelty free. Right, like okay. it doesn't blind bunny rabbits in testing and stuff like that. And I think Penhaligans are, um, they don't blind bunny rabbits, basically. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, it's, which is nice, you yeah. know. Um, I think Frederick Mal does blind bunny rabbits. <laughs> but my mum's banging into him. And I'm a huge fan. I think the brand's great. Yeah. Um, a great brand. Penhaligans, great name. Yeah. Uh, British. Um, yeah. Price isn't stupid. No, it's not, no. I um, think it's one. I think one nine, 195 quid for the, um, from the Halfetti, which I do think the Halfetti's, um, the probably the strongest range of slightly... So hands in the air. Apart from my mum's orange blossom, never smell them. Oh really? No. Oh, it's a great smell. The hal- is it? Yeah, a great smell. It's called Halfetti. Halfetti. And yeah, it's by them. Yeah. This is what you rocking. I've got that. Mm. I've got. I've got that. It's. It, it is. A, it's a beautiful smell. Absolute beautiful smell. And again, it. It stopped me in my tracks. So I remember this Did the it? first time I, I. Where's that? Um, they do all cheap designing gear. Uh, but not not fakes. It's oh, what's it? It's down south somewhere. There's a little village, and you can get like cheap Gucci, Burberry. Oh, oh what's it called? You know about that like Bista village? There, down there. there, Bista. Yeah. So I was just about to walk home into the car park, mm. and wa- walked past the, the shop, this perfume shop, and literally was like, what? What is that? And literally had to go into the shop. It it had that impact. It it um put a spell on you. Absolutely. It, it it's true though. Yeah. It's like that that. And again, I, I'm totally of the the uh, opinion of like you want slapped in the face. Yeah. If you if you're paying that that amount, you want you want, you want, like you said you want good, ideally good comments. But I think an offensive one again is it, still a, still a positive. Through the years about perfume, I've I've learned something about. Through the years, I haven't, you know, there was a time before Frederick Mal. <laughs> and when I go through all the years of the perfumes that I liked, right, there's a common denominator through them all. They're all heavy and main scent was patchouli. Right, okay. So I'm a patchouli guy. <laughs> and my nana, whenever I used to grow on my nana, she used to always, when I walk in, she'd be like, it reminds me of being young. And she'd say, back in the days of the hippies, like when my nana grew up, it was the 60s and 70s. And there was no really, nobody had money for fancy perfumes. But people used to go to Guru, you know, Guru the store, remember mm. in Dalo? Mm. And they'd buy real patchouli oil and they'd wear patchouli oil. So it was the smell of the hippies. Mm. Obviously now in these in these perfumes, they're putting more, more than patchouli in. They're putting wheatgrass and this rose and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, the, 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 I don't know, the hair follicle of a cow from India, all this shit. But <laughs> it's got a heavy scent it, and, and the base is around patchouli. Oh, right, so okay. So you can't go wrong with patchouli. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. No, I'm I'm, uh, I'm intrigued to see what that smell looks like. You'll the, be captivated. Uh, yeah. You know what it is? It's better for the Portrait people. Portrait of a lady. Great name, by the way. It's better for people that smell it. You'll put it on and you think, oh, that's pleasant. But what will happen, you mark my words, Anthony, and you report back to me, see if this happens. <laughs> Smother yourself in it. Be offensive, right? You'll like it. But what will happen is you'll forget you've got it on, right? It'll dry down. It'll be four, five, six hours later. And you'll be, and this has happened to me, right? I'll put it on in the morning. And the amount of times that this has happened to me, I couldn't tell you. This happens 
Weekly. <laughs> this is weekly. I will get stopped by strangers. Mm. It can be at a checkout. It can be someone that yeah. say, excuse me, what perfume are you wearing? Yeah. This happens weekly. Yeah, but when that's, a, that's when you've got a good, that's yeah. when you've got, uh, yeah, totally. I mean, it's good that we're not on a podcast and it's just me and you talking. Because right, okay. you know what I do as a rule? I make up another one. You know why? Because I don't want people knowing. I know, I know, no, I know. And I feel, I feel I'm like that as well. And I feel, but I think I'm in the club. Right. I think I'm in the, the secret. Well, it's just me and you here. Yeah. You know, no yeah. one's going to, no one hears what we're saying. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. So if anyone asks, you say, oh, it's Chanel. That's what you say, you know? It's just Chanel. But yeah. really, I like. No, but yeah, you do, you want something that no one's got. And that's why I went off Creed, uh, dabbled with the other Rangers None of them, none of them tick the box. No. Um, and then again, the the Umbrian Nomad, the the Pen Halligans, that, that that's a good one because not many people have got it. But no, I've never. I'm surprised because like there was another um, another range. I forget what it's called. Um, it's extortionate. You're gonna priced. call it you're about Killian, aren't you? Hennessy, Killian. No. Uh, what's it called? Oh, you're on about uh, Francis Kirkjian Mason, the square mm. bottles. Oh, what's it? No, it's neither of them. What's it called? Oh, I've lost, lost my train of thought. They, they do sell it in... Um, they do sell it in... Um, in the Metro Centre, the Harvey... Is it the Harvey Nicks or the Harrods? There's a Harrods? Yeah, there's Harrods in uh, Metro Centre now. I know. Where the fuck have I been? Really? <laughs> I, know. I know, yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, it's not... Oh, man, I'll, I'll, I'll get you the name anyway. I'd I'd seen some really good write ups and it was v- it was like very expensive but you know what it it what it I didn't rate it no I because I've been looking for a, a bit of a, a like a new fragrance you need a good projection don't you you I'm, need everyone in the queue to know you got it on <laughs> if you're spending that I mean I'm from a council estate do you know what I mean yeah hundred percent you know I've got no class I don't pretend to be <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm wearing a Jimmy totally, Savile tracksuit I'm totally fucking tacky I'm as tacky mean? as they come Whatever. I want to be fucking wiping people out with me yeah I want, I want their eyes to water <laughs> you know. What? You know, that's what I want. You know what I mean? That's what I want. I want to upset people, you know, or captivate them, whichever, yeah, you know, yeah. but I'm cool with both. But yeah, look, um, just between me and you, Anthony, don't tell nobody. No, no. Secret. No. It's portrait of a lady. It's Frederick Marl. Wow. It's the only perfume you ever need. Oh, wow. Mate, yeah. telling you, man. Best 250 you'll I can't wait to look at the reviews. Fam, um, you, they'll, they'll be positive, you know. Mm. I'll send you some videos from my cat guy. You know? Yeah. Because in second and third and fourth place, before we come off perfume, there were some very interesting ones, you know? Mm. He, I think he did a countdown from 20, so like the 20 best right, ever okay. portrait of a lady won. Right. But like two, three, and four, like they're not to be joked with perfumes. Have you have you smelled the Ombre Nomad? What? Have you not smelled that one? Mm-mm. Oh, mate. Really? <laughs> oh, mate. That's so, good. Oh, yeah. So there was, there was one that I seen. So this was like... The fucking power punches. So this this was fucking Dante Wilder Oofed. of fragrances. <laughs> this this mate. Put, this is fucking put your lights out, cleaning you out. Right. Yeah. Get, honestly, I, I, it's um, it's in fact, I'm repulsing my wife that much at the moment <laughs> because so she's so she's pregnant. She's like, you know, nearly. So that when you when you're pregnant, they, they've got they, they've got the highly highly. Um, sensitive, sensitive. Yeah, yeah. so she's re- she's requested that I don't wear it to the point where she's literally on the verge of spewing up <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> which again I'm deeming is quite a good thing because it's extremely offensive what's but it yeah, called Ombre Nomad Ombre Nomad give us a look at its health bar have a look at Ombre Nomad let's see the bottle <laughs> I mean I might smell it if I recognise oh, it I mean it's 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 fucking what are we talking so, prices so, um, I, th- I think it's uh, three it might be three two five right uh, four two five. No, that might be a bigger bottle. So the good, and also one of the good. So the good thing about it is though, uh, uh, Louis Vuitton will they will top it up for you. So once you have the bottle, um, you can take it to the store when you've uh, and you get it, you get a hundred quid off it. So right. they they'll refill it for you. So I never smelt this, but um, my pal Adam, Adam Pearson, shout out Adam Pearson. He, this is his perfume choice, right, and. I suppose like most people, you know you're on perfume. So what he says is like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. But he's banged on about this for years and said, this is the one like, off for ages anywhere. Oh yeah. Um, it's it's, 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 person a, it's an absolute showstopper. Is it? Absolute, deep, deep, sexy, <laughs> oody, Oofed. like slapping you in the face, sexy smell. Right. 
<laughs> I'm sold. I need it. It's that good, right? <laughs> Mate. So just wait till Sainsbury's gets this. <laughs> telling you. Yeah, Ombre and Amad, Louis Vuitton, watch this space. So, yeah, so there was like a, a countdown. This guy was like the packing a punch, which smell is absolutely punching you clean in the face. Right. This came out at number one. And really? that kind of like, that confirmed me thoughts because it, the, the, that smell completely stopped me in my tracks. And I had to like, where's this smell? What's it called? And then, you know, when you kind of haven't smelled it for ages yeah. and you think, was that, was a writing thing? And it was unbelievable. I smelled it again and it was just like, yes. I remember. Yeah. I remember old friend. Yes. <laughs> I remember. I love this. No, it's nice to see another, somebody else who was as passionate about yeah. fragrances as I it's am. It's important. It is. No, it is. Um, it's, it's a very... What's, from like an outsider, I, I, I like a good perfume. <clears throat> I, I don't mind like paying 50 quid for a million of the world or something like that. <laughs> oh, I don't laugh like that, boys. But what, <laughs> Peasant. What, what, does, what, what, com, what comes, what, what's the motivation behind it? Because I'm quite happy just smelling all right. Myself, have you got a pen and bit of paper? <laughs> What do you mean? What's the motivation? <laughs> I, well, I like, think... there will be people who watch this who think, oh, fucking hell, spending that much. I, I, I couldn't actually physically spend that. Well, you're, you, you, you're tapping into one of the, the most important senses of, of, of humans, which is the sense of smell. And you've got, you've got visually, and I don't know, it's just, um, it, it's just some, you know how everyone's just into certain things. It's just kind of like, one of the things that I've been, that, that I'm into. But mm -hmm. I do think it's, you, if you kind of like think someone, like you've got, it, it's a, oh, wow, that smells so nice. Fragrance, right? M much like how you look visually, how you dress, right? Is doing wonders for you in every aspect in life, even even <laughs> things you don't think about. So let me give you an example. Obviously there's the directly, yes, you're going to do well with the females. Females are going to like it, obviously. <laughs> But let me, let me take this a bit further. If you're in a workplace, right? This is true. This is wisdom I'm bringing you here. You're in a workplace and you are near your boss. Without him knowing, or, or you know, whatever, the, he's smelling something of pleasure and yeah. it's psychologically make, making them drawn to you. Mm. And it's psychologically doing well for you in your career and you don't actually realize it is. You're around a supermarket, you go and pass people, you'll find the checkout person. They might not even say it, but they've caught a whiff of what you smell like. And they're a certain, they'll deal with you a certain way. You know what I mean? They, they'll yeah. they'll give you a certain smile. I may not give the next person. I'm not saying it's all sexual. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be. No. But even around your pals, right? Okay, another thing. If, you, you, if you're wearing links, right? They ain't doing nothing for your pals. But if you're walking around smelling like portrait of a lady, and they they might not say, "Oh, you smell nice, mate," but they're thinking like they are thinking he smells like dynamite, and that is psychologically making them like like you more, sort of thing. It's it's yeah. it's it's improving everything. I went to Ming Chef to get me chicken fried rice again. I travel; they don't deliver. <laughs> <laughs> My man, yes. <laughs> and and they told me I smelled nice. Like you know, you get if you if you wear yeah. the, a level of you, you, a top notch fragrance. You're getting told you smell nice when you're getting your chicken fried rice. Right, off, well, off, I've, <laughs> I've learned something there. Th thank you. That's all I needed to learn. I'm giving context for the viewers who are probably on my side of things. But yes, I've never met anybody so obsessed with perfumes like you, Daniel. When I started working with Ash, I was like, no way. You and Reese, especially, absolutely. You, they, they, you do come in and you smell class. I'll give you that. Smile and the world smiles back. But so Anthony, far. you have it as well. So fair enough. People have the little things and... I, I do respect it and I understand it now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's, for me, it's important. But um, each of their own. Yeah. So you're, you're doing a podcast as well, right, Anth? Yeah. Tell us about the podcast. So it's... I've, all, I've always kind of flirted maybe with just the thought of podcasts because I'm, I'm into them. I, I like podcasts. Yeah. Um, but ne nothing ever like fully kind of like triggered me to do it. But the Never Throw on the Tail project, it just totally, um, I thought there was a lot of value in actually doing a podcast about this because the the message is basically, it's all about mindset, mental health, physical health, stories of inspiring and stories of helping. 
And it, it was just basically, it just totally makes perfect sense of what we're about as a, as a project to, you know, the, one of the main messages talking is a strength. It's not a weakness. That you, we, we, so we just thought we could, we could hit and help more actually with doing a podcast and yeah. getting guests on. You mentioned there, there is a point I wanted to ask you about, and this is me getting my controversial, not my, my opposing hat on again. <clears throat> you know, talking about your problems, right? And this is actually speaking from experience, right? Yeah. When I had my little sad time, as I call it, and I don't mean sad as in, oh, that's sad, I mean upset, I was down, you know? I found talking about it made it worse mm. because it was reliving it. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually got involved with like a counseling thing and was was talking to people and stuff. And you know what I learned? I, I didn't learn because I'd heard it said. My mum had told me this when she was a kid. Or when I was a kid, when I was growing up. She, her way my mum deals with problems and bad memories and bad things is she locks them away in a box in her head. Mm. And she doesn't let them out. Yeah. And she doesn't bring it to the forefront. And I, I used to think this is before all of all of my, my sort of thing. And I'd say, but ma'am, that's not the right thing to do. You're supposed to talk about your problems. And she said, no, you lock them away and pretend they're not there. And I used to think, you're weird. But funnily enough, through my little mini breakdown I had, I now I look back, talking about them, that was, and, and just after those meetings of discussing what, what was bad, that was the worst I ever felt because I'd brought right. it right to the front Right, okay. Whereas, you know, a week down the line, yeah, it bothered me, but I was, for most parts of the day, it was locked away. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I just wonder what your thoughts are on that. This is this is not my opinion. Yeah. This is an opinion I've yeah. heard that talking about your problems, it's literally keeping it here, right here. You're always thinking about it, you're obsessing about it, and you're just constantly yeah. reliving it. What, what's your views on that? I think it's, again, I think it's an interesting point that you've, that you've brought up. I think... I think so, so. Firstly, I think talking is absolutely not enough. The, I, I'm a big believer of you've got to take action. You've got to you've got to actively change things up. If whatever's got whatever's getting you down, whatever you whatever you can, whether it's a toxic relationship, whatever it is. And I remember I, I went and seen um, a professional about the alcohol and the drugs and all that type of stuff, and I kind of thought um, there would be this magic wand that got me better. And then I kind of realized is actually, there's only going to be one person that gets me out of it, me. Um, so it, I think it's an interesting topic. I think you, a lot of people do get a lot of comfort of if someone hears someone of they've been in a dark place and you kind of, they can relate to you and then they kind of realize they're not weird and they can, and and a lot of hope as well. When you if you if you've that's one that's one thing. If you've heard someone, if you're in a bad place, and you've heard someone sharing that story of actually, you know what, I wasn't in a good place, but you know what, I'm still here today. This is what I implemented. That's why I think it's important to share because those if some if someone's kind of in a bad place, in the hearing say you, you've admitting that you've not been in a good place, but actually you've got out of it. The, those words can be golden. Mm. And that's why I think, in the, that, and that's the angle I'm coming from in terms of sharing stories. It's, you know, mental health and suicide and all that. It's, 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 it's quite a dark, raw topic. It's doom and gloom. Where I'm coming from an angle of, from a fighting spirit of actually you can, you can get through that if you if you've got adversity or if you're in a dark place, it's not over. You can actually get through that if you implement these things. And that that's what we 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 want people who are sharing stories who've been in that dark place, but they've come out the other end and you can survive and you can go on to thrive. Mm. And that's the kind of the angle about it that we're coming from. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with with that sentiment. Actually, um, talking, maybe not talking. Um, but but definitely hearing a hearing hearing a tale or a story or a, or a, a you know an event that's happened in somebody else's life and seeing that they overcame it that 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 fuels me for example and I'm sure many others with a, with a lot of inspiration and a lot of fight because it can yeah I can you know it's part of the you know it's part of the story you know you've got to have your dark times to go up again do you yeah. know what I mean so I do think um, I do think that hearing 
other people's um, stories is is valuable. Like, yeah, and you yourself, obviously, having been through your own shit. Let's be honest. Would have, would have. Yeah, you know, as high as you like, as low as you like. Yeah, and out smiling with a beautiful haircut at the other end. Um, you know, there's there's <laughs> hope Smell, for us all. Smelling mate. nice, smelling well. nice. Yeah, there's hope <laughs> for us all, mate. I was thinking it. Um, Summit. I learned, and and this is for me. This is what this podcast is. This isn't a business, and and we don't make any money off this. We <clears> do this. Um, for pleasure and this is what I, I call this it's not an hour anymore but I call this my escape hour yeah so and what I'm and I think everybody can can sort of use this if if you're depressed if you're down if you feel shit if you've got something bad you don't like and you, you know something you don't like okay you're depressed you're overweight you've got a drug problem whatever 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 you don't like your job for the most part an escape hour is a good idea. And what, what my view on an escape hour is, isn't escaping the world. It's doing something to escape from your problem. Yeah. So, okay, the obvious one. If you're fat, what's your escape hour? You exercise for an hour, mm -hmm. right? If um, you're in a job you don't like, right? You spend an hour trying to find a way to get a different job, right? Yeah. My thing was similar to that. I'm in a job I don't really like and I want an escape from it. To doing my podcast, that the podcast, to be honest, saved me from my mental health problem. Right. Okay. Because this gave me a light. Yeah. You know what I mean? It gave me a light. And it, it isn't, people think, okay, if you were 20 stone, well, it's not even that far. If you were 30 stone and you go to the gym for an hour, you're going to get home, you're still going to be 20 stone, right? And you, you, th <clears throat> you could think to yourself, well, I'm still going to be sad. Well, no, your brain chemistry, just knowing that you're doing something about it, not necessarily achieved it yet, not necessarily obtained what you're trying to get, but just the action of doing something to get out of it, the escape hour. You've got a plan. You are actively taking steps. That's taken the edge off already. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I think no matter what's going on, bar obviously, you know, terminal illness, God, you know, God bless people, you know, there's not a lot you can do there really. I mean, there is things you can do to lighten you, you know, lighten how you feel. Yeah. But for the most part, and it'll cover 95% of people, if, if you're depressed, you, you know, for the most part, you've got a reason as to why you're depressed. So certainly you think you do. If you put an hour aside a day to do something, to tackle it, to go in the opposite Absolutely. direction, just doing that action when you go to bed at night, you'll feel a bit better. And sometimes 100%. that bit better is all you actually need to save your life. 100%. That bit better. 100%. In it. 100%. I remember like when I, when I, um, I use the word cha change up. I needed to get a job. I'd missed five mortgage payments. Um, I had no direction. And I, I knew I had to get out of that circle of acquaintances that I was around and I remember I moved to my change up was actually a change of location and a normal job and I remember <clears throat> I was house sharing at 33 East Raby Street right. um not having a house share and I was on a uh, working in a hair salon and I had to I had to kind of retrain my skill set so I was mainly sweeping floors so I remember walking to work the first ever day that I, it was my first ever job from from Big Brother. It was a huge deal to me, mm. and kind of like you would you could you could look, you know, on the outset was, you know, I was memory's not doing good. I wasn't really, you know, I'd, I had to, I had to start back from from scratch. Literally, um, house sharing, and I was employed and stuff. But I knew, I remember there was this sounds proper proper corny. And a bit cheesy, but the, my first day walking to work, the, the it, it was raining, and I and I was quite nervous about starting this new job, and uh, I was just like, I'm I'm so pleased to be alive, like, and I and I knew that I was not in a good space, not in a good place, like it, I was um, 29 or something. All all my best pals were married and jobs and all that, but I knew I was making the right steps, and you know them small steps. I met me now. I met me now. Wife at that first job I ever had. That I've mm. got a family, and me and me life started building momentum again, just from making them right moves. Mm. So them them small steps can be can be absolutely huge to getting into a better place. Like you said on your first day, that day in that rain when you had that feeling, 
you hadn't really achieved what you were setting. That first day was the first day of you trying to achieve something. Yeah. But you felt something positive yeah. in the fact that I'm doing this. Yeah. And there's something in it, in it. Absolutely. Don't think because you haven't lost the 20 stone or you haven't got the new job or whatever it is that you haven't got it. Don't think that you need to get it to fix your problem. You just need to ta start making steps. And Absolutely. if you make steps, it'll take the edge off. Yeah. And it's the, you, you know what, it's the, it's the small, uh, if I'm a big believer of getting the basics right. And if you do the basics right, like we've got a Never Throw on the Tell project, um, free members group. We have, we'll, we'll do little tasks, three litres of water, 10,000 steps, get a cold shower, have a cold dip, get some exercise. You do them simple things in your lifestyle, just them small little wins consistently mm. over a stretch of time. Guarantee you will look better, feel better. Things will start coming together. Just them small wins. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those little small wins you talked about, they might not fix your problem, but they may well change how you look at that problem. So far, we're going to have to do a three hour podcast here. We want, we, 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 this, one's a, this one's a special. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go, go on Wiley like we could have done two hours on perfumes I know yeah no we could have literally we could have don't get me started you'll notice you talk about perfumes I get, oh shit, I get excited do you know what I mean it's like I'm, I love perfumes I love talking about it I didn't realise there was so much to them really but oh yeah but look we are, we are in the process of rounding up right um, <clears throat> I want to ask you mate before we do um, are you obsessed I've got very very obsessive traits that can be big advantages, um, but there can be um, compromises and flaws to that behaviour. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I thought as much. Just the way you are going about this um, never throwing the towel thing, you, you, I, I, I'm not sure what it is, but it, you know, it could it could be you, you're sorry about your grandma that's that's putting the fuel in the fire. But I can see something in you that is is more than you just going through the pro, you know, you know, sort of going through the process of something. I can tell it means something, and um, I was just curious to see, you know, is is this an obsession that you that you're on with? Is it an obsession? Um, borderline, but something that I. Uh, but I, like I said, I'm, I've got those traits. Mm. If 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 I'm if I'm doing something that can, that I'm into or I want to do it, I can become obsessive. So there's there's definitely, it's definitely a trait in me, but it's also, absolutely the story of where where it comes from. It comes from a place of the heart. Mm. It's a, it's a huge problem that absolutely needs tackled, and I'm. I'm kind of taking the, the I'm t I'm grabbing the situation by the balls, and as as bad as a as much as a problem it is, I still don't think it's like I do I still don't think it's kind of tackled as 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 much as it should be. So yeah, yeah, I am. But I've got that. I'm I'm I am like that as a as a as a person. Like um, sometimes like me me but I'm so extreme. Me, like I sometimes drive me, me, me wife around the bench. She's like, "Well, why have you got to do it so extreme? Like if I'm, you know, if I'm gonna lose weight, I'm, I'm, I'll go to the gym twice a day, and I'm literally nibbling on chicken and broccoli. Like I, I've got that trait. Yeah, obsession can work in two ways, can it? It can, um, it can fuck your life up, or it can be a superpower, depending yeah. on which way you use it. Yeah, I think obsession. You know, I think obsession and addiction aren't too far away from each other. I think the cousins. You know, <laughs> uh, I think no. You, you're right. You know, ob obsession and addiction—they've definitely got um, traits of the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's 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 good. It's good to see. Is is what I'm saying. It's good to see. Um, Appreciate that. So, what we do norm normally here is like, how how do people get involved with the Never Throwing the Tower project? What do they need to do? What steps? Because there might be somebody out there now that's heard this and thought, listen, I, I want a piece of that. Yeah, so in terms of on on social on socials, um, it's never throw on the tell project. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. We've got a free free members group in the in the face in the Facebook, um, and we we basically run we run free retreats every month. Um, 
we're currently doing them at Kippen Nook in Darlington. We do them there. Uh, we've done one at Hartlepool. Um, the aim is to dart them all over the all over the northeast. That's the aim. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. We're, so never throw on the towel project on social media. That's that's the best way to kind of to get a hold of us. And you've sort of led me into my my last and second final question: is what's the aim? What's the target? I mean, dare to dream. Not just okay. Not just for the Neville Throat and the Tower Project for the Barbering as well. Have you got an aim? Have you got a goal? Have you got something you want to achieve in either one of those two fields? Um, <clears throat> with the um, with the the project, so the we're, we're in the process of setting up a charity, um, and that that was kind of we thought because we we stumbled across kind of funding. You know, where, where at first it, w- it wasn't a plan to kind of like have this big project and stuff. So we 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 needed we ran out of box. We needed money for boxing clubs. We needed money for insurance, and we're obviously doing them for free. So then it was like, well, we need. What if we? I had the idea of thought. Well, what if we kind of become a charity, and then we are able to get funding, and we'll always keep them free, mm. and then we can have like ambassadors or I was thinking let's call them wolves or uh, we'll have a wolf pack where we have guys of of like-minded attitude and mentality in different areas running never through on the tell projects mm. all over the northeast um a bit like um uh, Andy's man club they kind of I know they I think they have kind of like a lot of their stuff's kind of uh sharing circles indoors and stuff mm-hmm. whereas um Ours will will always kind of be the walk, the boxing, the circuits, the breathwork, and the cold water. Stick to that. it'll be that format. So that's kind of um, the the aim, really. In terms of you know, I've done, I've done. I'm obviously so God knows how I've become a guest speaker. Um, I've got my eye on TED talk. A TED talk. I am. Like it. I've got my eye on that, yeah. and like I said, probably that obsessive behaviour probably won't stop till that happens and just and just kind of and, and and also not being too again you can be uh, you can be focused on goals and again that's a again that's a trait trying to just be aware of them and just enjoy the ride enjoy the journey and have the gratitude of enjoying life yeah no as as listen I, I i often say that to myself and think am i being corny but it's actually true it's literally actually true. If you focus on the end result too much, you're missing you're missing the best bit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, a great man I listen to, Jim Rohn. He, I'm probably going to butcher this saying, but um, he says something along the lines of, "If you have reached your destination, the destination isn't the thing that's valuable. It's what you've become along the way to obtain that destination. That's the value in it." Absolutely, what yeah. you became along the yeah. way. I'm sure I've butchered it, but um, anyone who wants to fact check that, it's Jim Rohn. He's some kind of like right. wisdom guy. Yeah, it's true. It is true, though. Yeah. It is true. And it's it's hard in this, the, the modern world, world, this modern day world, that we've got all this all this type of stuff. But I always think, and again, it's sometimes it's hard to implement, but be present. Mm. It's This is a present. It's yeah. to be enjoyed and try and just not get too focused on there the end goal because a lot of the time again you the stuff gets compromised it's true um final question um can are you taking on new clients as a hairdryer a hairdryer hairdresser if anyone watches this no and thinks, i'm just uh, i'm just a, i'm just a one i'm just a one man band now in terms of the um the the cutting hair i came out of mr came out came out of mr hutton's was thinking about getting another shop um and in the meantime i was renting a chair which I still do now, and like I said, the the never throw on the towel project kind of like is through is through is through a spanner in that, and kind of I'll always I'll always cut hair, I will always do that, but I feel as if the plans that we've got with this project, it's gonna me my path's gonna go down this down that path. Well, take it from an outsider looking in, and somebody who who does listen, what you're doing is making. Um, ripples and good positive ripples not necessarily from well i'm sure from the people that come on these retreats with you and the people that contact you but also word on the street for, for me from an outsider looking in that hasn't been that just saw it it's it's really positive and um i'm sure i won't be alone so mate, massive respect um 
it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Been class. I've, 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 I love watching it, and I've, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed being on this. I mean, we, we could literally. There's, I've, I've there, there may have to be a round two. It. There may have to be yeah, a round two. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Brilliant. Absolutely Thank you. brilliant. Cheers, South Park. No worries. Um, that's the end of that, people. Um, have you got anything else, South Park? I'm supposed to say. Um, no, but this is coming out on the 28th of June, and the next event for Never Throwing the Towel is the 30th. So make sure to book tickets. It will be linked below. Beautiful. Um, everybody that watches, thank you. We couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you to Dash, the sponsor of the video. Um, this has been People Like Us. Anthony, thank you for talking with people like us. And we'll see you next time.